tycoon games, factory automation, life sims, and so much more. Do you think you know the difference between simulation games and simulators? See if you can explain that, because I struggle every year. Now, I spent months compiling this list that focuses on more logistical, business, train, and building games, so welcome to the ultimate list of the most anticipated upcoming simulation games of 2024. Beginning the simulation, Galactic Care. This looks like theme hospital but in space, and it's looking very promising. You build, manage, and optimize an intergalactic hospital, you recruit staff and satisfy the whims of various alien species, and you cure their bizarre illnesses. You save the galaxy in story mode, or you head into sandbox to design the hospital of your dreams. Well, your dreams in space, anyway. I mean, generally, it seems like a really cool idea. Now, I remember the reasoning of why medical simulation games tend to be very silly and outlandish. It's because when it comes to diseases and sicknesses, if they're realistic diseases, they can feel a bit too close to home, like it is in Project Hospital. So games like Theme Hospital and, more recently of course, Two Point Hospital go the crazy route in terms of what the ailments are. And this one goes even further, bringing it off of Earth and into space. But besides that, it's what you would expect from a hospital simulation game. You design, furnish and upgrade your hospital, you hire doctors with traits and backgrounds, and you keep everyone relatively content by satisfying various needs. It is good that there is a story mode and a campaign, which is always appreciated, and Sandbox is available as well, so you should, like, if you enjoy Galactica, then it's one that you should be able to keep playing for quite some time, if it's good anyway. Now, Galactica is setting a quarter one 2024 release window, so that should be relatively soon, based on when this video is being made, but it might be delayed. The most recent update is telling you about what has been finished, and it seems like a lot of things have been finished. Considering we're almost at the end of quarter one right now, I'm not 100% convinced Galactica will release on time, but we'll see if they manage to cure their ailments. Breaking out with a surprise announcement, Prison Architect 2. This one was announced very recently, and Prison Architect is one of the most successful simulation games of the last decade. It's very, very popular, and you have a game like that, it's very difficult to make a sequel. So Prison Architect 2 is changing things up by making it 3D. Adding the third dimension may be what the sequel needs, or it may just sort of remove the, the quirky magic of it, it's hard to tell. Prison Architect 2 is supposed to be releasing on the 26th of March 2024, which is very soon. But it is also developed by Paradox Interactive, which generally what they do is have lots of DLC and expansions, and games tend to be a little bit more straightforward on release day. But also Paradox Interactive is currently struggling with difficulties with City Skylines 2, so we're gonna have to see what Prison Architect 2 is on release because we need to see if this one has been going a little bit smoother behind the scenes. Now, if you don't know Prison Architect, it's a game where you design, develop, and personalize your own little penitentiary. You build a prison, and you basically host and manage prisoners who are trying to escape and getting up to various misdeeds under your watch. The sequel is promising more buildings, smarter inmates, an upgraded career mode, and a promise of your choices mattering in terms of the decisions you make in how you control, how you build prison policies, and just generally how you solve the problems. So overall, Prison Architect 2 seems to be shaping up, and Paradox has been delaying some other games which they feel have not been quite up to the standards they want post City Skylines 2 launch. So considering the 26th March release date for Prison Architect 2, that does seem to indicate that this one has been going according to plan and is in a ready state. But, you know, as always, let's see what it is on day one first. And we'll see if Prison Architect 2 can live up to its original, and maybe even surpass it. Next up, we've got Fantastic Haven. 
You restore the equilibrium of magic by saving endangered fantasy creatures. You build your shelter to welcome and protect them, you explore unique regions, you rally neighboring populations to your cause, and you rehabilitate creatures in their natural environment. Overall, this one seems to feel like a fantasy zoo tycoon kind of game, which I think a lot of people are into. I mean, a lot of people are into zoo tycoon, and they keep going back to play it or asking for a new one. And this fantasy approach to that sort of game could be what you're looking for. As with many of these games, you pick a starting location and you build up infrastructure, you unlock new research and buildings as you go along, and you gather newer and more difficult to manage creatures. You can send out your mages to explore the surrounding area and discover points of interest. You can find injured creatures to bring back to your refuge. You negotiate with hostile populations. You make decisions with repercussions and collect the five types of ether available, which is the game's resources and currency. I mean, this looks very pleasant. It looks slightly quirky, very bright and colorful, and a little bit cartoony, but I think people looking for these sorts of games appreciate that aesthetic, and overall it does look kind of nice. It says it's planning to release in quarter two 2024, but there is also a Fantastic Haven prologue page, which also says release date is quarter two 2024. So it's a little unclear if quarter two 2024 is the release window for the full game or the prologue or both at the same time. Usually when there's a prologue, it's more like a reviewable demo on Steam and it's set up and released before the full game. I assume the prologue will be releasing in quarter two and the full game a little bit later, if not much later, depending on how the prologue goes. Speaking of quirky and colorful, Horticula. You have been magically summoned by mysterious gnomes to restore a long lost garden. You attract adorable animals, you build a lush environment, and immerse yourself in this relaxing garden builder. And you have to see whether you have the skills it takes to reclaim the wasteland or you succumb to a looming corruption. Generally, it does seem like a lot of simulation games these days is about restoring the environment. We have Terra Nil that released recently, and a lot of city builders are about post-apocalypse or restoring from a post-apocalypse. I mean, maybe for obvious reasons, you know, the environment is a bit of a topic, but in Horticula, it is colorful, cute, cartoony, with some very charming pixel graphics, which many of you will appreciate, and some of you just hate all pixel art, so you can skip this one. If you're unsure, there is a free demo for this game, which you can just try on Steam. At the time of recording, anyway, it is available. You can just download the demo, give it a try, and see if you enjoy building with some creative freedom, managing the animal ecosystems, maintaining the magic, upgrading your garden. And this is a cozy game where you can snap pretty pictures. And also, bonus point is that the game files are supposed to be easily accessible for modding, and there is an included editor. So if you like the game, but you want to change things up, modding is a thing for Horticula. Now, besides the free demo, it is supposed to be releasing fully in 2024, so we'll see how this one grows into the future. Hey, now that you're a bit into the list, I'm sure you're enjoying it, so it would be greatly appreciated if you can like the video. Thank you. All right, next game. Mind Over Magic. Here we have a game where you design, build, and manage your magic school to explore what lies below. You study lost arcana, grow exotic plants, brew potions, and raise undead servants, and only you can prepare your fragile students to harness their mind over magic. This one is a sort of side view base builder game, which we have seen a few of over the years, and this one is all about magic. You are building your magic school on top of this underworld, and you explore these labyrinthine caves and caverns beneath your school, where you'll be sending, I assume, is your students to hopefully success. But basically, it's all about magic. Wands, potions, familiars, and that stuff. Now, this one went into early access right at the end of 2023. Two very positive reviews. It's over 90% positive on Steam right now, and they're planning to have a full release in 2024 at some point. But of course, with any early access game, it can go longer. But that's the plan right now for Mind Over Magic. 
Going a bit more modern, Industry Giant 4. This is the latest iteration of the Industry Giant series where you'll be building an industrial empire from scratch which includes producing goods, building up your industries, constructing transportation networks, planning production, managing finances, and navigating global events. You're just trying to be the next industry mogul. You know, a visionary industrial leader where you basically own everything. And you start in the 1950s and continue developing from there. You get to experience a progression of automation and digitization, and you gotta make decisions so that your business and industry can survive. There's supposed to be a total of 25 different industries, you can define your own company philosophy, you keep an eye on all the data to monitor the flow of goods and the condition and efficiencies of your factories. There's plenty of logistical simulations, seasonal challenges, and events that you're gonna have to deal with. I mean, it all sounds really nice, and Industry Giant is a long-running series. I mean, the first Industry Giant is actually from 1997, so it's approaching three decades for this series. But also, if you look up Industry Giant on Steam, you'll see there's Industry Giant 1, Industry Giant 2, and then this one, Industry Giant 4. You might be wondering, where's Industry Giant 3? And apparently that was renamed to Industry Transporters, and that has mostly negative reviews and it was it's still in early access apparently i'm pretty sure it's abandoned but also that's from different developers and publishers as well so it's just kind of weird like what happened with industry giant 3 why is it from a different publisher a different developer and renamed to something else industry giant 4 hopefully picks up from industry giant 2 and just continues to be a somewhat niche but good game Moving on, Hollywood Animal. This is a game where you make your dreams come true, or you just crush other people's dreams. You take the helm of a major Hollywood studio at the dawn of sound cinema, and you guide it through decades of creative achievements and glamour, debauchery and dark deeds, tough choices and unpleasant compromises. This one sounds kind of like the movies, where you're just sort of managing this film studio. So yeah, you'll be managing this multi-billion dollar monster of an industry. And you're the boss, but not the groundskeeper. So you are slightly more zoomed out from this business, because you're in charge of the whole big picture thing. But being the boss, you have a finger in every pie. At every step of the filmmaking process, you'll be coming up with plots to theater distribution. But you know, old Hollywood has a lot of uh, complications to it, and you may have to make some difficult decisions to get what you want. It's an interesting looking game, and it's got this old-timey feel to it, but it does feel like a modern gameplay approach to this sort of thing. It could be good, the trailers look promising, it's aiming for a 2024 release window, so we'll see what Hollywood Animal releases later in the year. For some farming on a smaller scale, Acres. This is supposed to be a small strategy simulation game about growing crops for evolving market demands. You build a farm, one acre at a time, to create a prosperous enterprise, upgrading your equipment, optimizing harvests, and nurturing the soil against increasing time pressure. So this sort of feels like farming simulation plus puzzle game, and you know, at first glance it does look like a more simplified version compared to some of the other farming games out there that we also have on this list. But maybe that's what you want. Farming games can be so complicated and daunting and expansive, so maybe Acres scales it down to something that's a bit more manageable for you. Now, this one did release into Early Access towards the end of 2023, to few but very positive reviews, currently on Steam, floating above the 80% mark. And they do estimate about six months in early access, which actually we're kind of approaching already. So I don't expect a full release on schedule. Six months from the start of early access would be April 2024, and I would expect they're gonna take longer than that, because the full roadmap can always have more stuff added to it. But yeah, you'll be tilling the soil, planting crops, weeding and cultivating your plants, maintaining the soil and harvesting the fruits of your labor. There's more simplistic automation here, and it's a bit more of a relaxing atmosphere. 
I mean, it does specifically say on the Steam page that Acres does not offer deep layers of factory building mechanics, realistic simulations, or even animal husbandry. This is just about the crops. Acres, a nice little farming sim that you might be into, but if not, let's move on to the next game. Instruments of Destruction. Instead of cultivating something new, we're gonna blow it up. In this game, it's a vehicle building sandbox which features advanced physics based destruction. You create construction vehicles and then you use them to demolish buildings and complete various objectives. This is sort of a newer iteration of many other vehicle construction slash destruction simulation games that we've had over the years and this one actually entered early access earlier on in 2022. So it's been a couple years since and it does have very positive reviews on Steam. It's at overall reviews at 94% positive and recent reviews is actually 100% positive at the time of recording. It's more of a niche game but those who are buying into and playing Instruments of Destruction are loving it so far but I think it is for a specific audience. Not everyone is into building these vehicles and destroying things. It looks good and the physics simulation does seem to be very accurate. All the bits and pieces go flying around just as you want them to be. Instruments of destruction. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. You build vehicles and you destroy things with said vehicles. And then I'm gonna mention Noble's Life Kingdom Reborn. This is supposed to be a realistic medieval noble simulation game and at the same time a kind of strategy game with supposed to be historical depth where you manage your city and villages and make decisions in non-linear events. You command defenses in epic sieges and organize raids. Having said that, the trailer does not seem like actual raw real gameplay at the moment and I do have to make a note here that the publisher is Playway and you know it's always a contemplation for me in terms of listing Playway games because they tend to promise a lot and some Playway games blow up in popularity they're like very very popular very successful very well liked but they do tend to have this thing where they sort of make a very cool looking trailer and it sort of looks like what gameplay is supposed to be but it's not actually gameplay yet and then if there's enough interest in the idea and the trailer, then they actually get to producing the game. So Playway games tend to be very long developments. They tend to be announced years in advance and then they start producing them and it takes years to produce the game. There's often demos and prologues which go on for years before we get to an actual full finished game. Having said that, Noble's Life Kingdom Reborn has had a demo and it does seem to be coming along and they're planning for a 2024 release window. So if Noble's Life Kingdom Reborn does turn out to be good, then that's great. Because of the demo, there is footage of actual gameplay out there and it doesn't look quite as smooth as the trailer, but it's getting there. And, you know, it might be something that really lives up to what it's promising. It might not. It might do, though. So we'll see how Noble's Life Kingdom Reborn shapes up. In a similar age, but a very different game, Blacksmith Master. Here you manage your own medieval smithy and you supervise the entire process from mining ores and gems to designing and selling finished products. You forge everything from weapons and armor to tools to cooking utensils to fund your craft and become the blacksmith master. So generally this is a business tycoon building game where you are building up your own forge, well your whole blacksmith really, and you have to collect the resources and hire people and master your craft and do good business generally. It's all about being a blacksmith. So if you're into being a blacksmith, then this could be a nice little cool business tycoon simulation game. Visually, it's low poly, which actually looks kind of okay. It's not that low poly, but I always make a note because some of you are okay with low poly or enjoy it, and some of you just really don't like it. It's like pixel art. Some people love it, some people don't. And we haven't seen too, too much of Blacksmith Master yet, but it is supposed to be releasing in 2024, so hopefully it'll be able to refine its raw ore into a shiny piece of metal. 
for another vehicle building construction simulation kind of game, Mars First Logistics. This one is a little bit more productive than the last one, where you're actually building up uh, physically simulated rovers and you transport awkwardly shaped cargo across the surface of Mars. So obviously the lower gravity is going to be a bit of a problem. You earn funds to unlock new parts and you use your ingenuity to help establish a new home on the Martian surface. Now this one actually went into early access around the middle of 2023 and it's got overwhelmingly positive reviews. At the time of recording it's got about 700 reviews on Steam which is not a lot but they're at 97% positive. So I think it's to do with managing expectations and delivering on those expectations. And Mars First Logistics, I mean, it's pretty clear what it is. You can see the trailer, you can see the screenshots, you know what you're getting into. It's got this sort of interesting art style where it's very flat colors and it has this comic book-esque kind of look to it, which is kind of cool, actually. So everyone knows what they're getting into when they get this game and then it just delivers on that. Right? Also, you can play this solo or in online co-op. So you can imagine the online co-op will be a fun, crazy time. But if you just want to build up yourself, then you can do it by yourself. Now, it's supposed to be an early access for about a year to get to version 1.0. So the goal is to release Mars First Logistics fully by the middle of 2024. This is one of the games which might actually be able to do it because it seems like it's going along so smoothly and people are really enjoying it. They could release and everyone would continue to enjoy the game anyway. So they might stick to their schedule or they could just go on forever in early access, continually adding more stuff because some games just do that. But generally speaking, Mars First Logistics has landed very, very nicely with its audience and maybe you want to check it out yourself. All right, from this point on, I'm going to organize the list into some subgenres. Those last 12 games have been sort of general, hard to categorize simulation games. And moving forward, we're going to go through specifically factory, tycoon, god games, train games, life sims, and city building games. So getting into factory games for the next bunch. Shapes 2. This is a very highly requested game and although it is supposed to be fully releasing in 2025, it's going into early access in 2024. This is a factory building game where the focus is just building huge factories. You construct sprawling multi-level factories and you min-max your layouts without limits. It's tailor-made for enthusiasts who crave the thrill of optimizing production lines and perfecting automation. You know who you are. Now, the original Shapes game released in 2020, and it was very, very popular. It got almost 10,000 user reviews on Steam at 96% overwhelmingly positive. So people loved the original, but the original was sort of a top-down 2D kind of game. Shapes 2 is going full 3D, and it sort of feels like a Prison Architect, a Prison Architect 2 kind of thing, and it looks really good. And also, there's a free demo at the time of recording, so you can just try it right now and see if it's something that you want to get into. I mean, if you're a fan of the original Shapes, you're probably gonna love this one, but if you never played the original Shapes factory kind of simulation game, then this might be the time to jump in. Very handily, I think a lot of games should do this, a lot of sequels should do this, there's a what's in it for you section on the Steam page, and there's if you're new to factory games, what's gonna be great, like building and automating factories, it's supposed to be beginner friendly and there's no pressure or penalties. If you're a factory game veteran, you can solve automation and logistical challenges. You can min-max your factory layouts and explore tons of complex mechanics. But if you played the original Shapes 1, then things that are new here should be trains, multi-layer factories, a research tree, multiple new shape mechanics, a blueprint library, fluids, and space stations and exploration. So there's a lot to this game. It seems like exactly what a sequel should be. It just feels correct <laughs> based on, if you look at Shapes 1 and then you look at Shapes 2, it just, it just feels the vibe is just what it's supposed to be. You can try the free demo right now. It's going into early access later in 2024 and then full release is supposed to be in 2025. 
Going a short way out into space, the crust. Your lunar colony holds the last hope for humanity. A narrative-led lunar colony sim, this is a game where you build on and beneath the surface, explore the moon, and expand into interplanetary space. Harness lunar resources and you get to shape the destiny of mankind as a CEO. So this game is all about building up a manufacturing colony on the moon. You lay the groundwork for exploration of deep space as you mine valuable resources, automate production, manage scientific expeditions, and just explore what is on the moon. You get to trade and influence the world market. You assemble a team of heroes because people are your most valuable resource, and you gotta keep track of your colonists' health, mood, and needs. You unravel mysteries that you might not be expecting, and you'll be facing dangers and risks where only the strongest will survive. Generally, this looks pretty cool. I mean, it's on the moon, so things are kind of gray, but in terms of exploration and mining, I mean, there's also surface and underground, there's a tech tree, there's a lot here. And it looks like it will satisfy a lot of you who are looking for this kind of automation kind of building game. And you won't have to wait too long. It's planning for a quarter one 2024 release, so the crust is on the way and it's not too far away. Staying back on the ground, revive and prosper. Here you gather resources, you build a base, automate and optimize. Perfect. It's a voxel base building strategy game where you remodel terrain and cultivate food with six mutants and their golem sidekick. <laughs> so there's the twist here. You produce and deliver by conveyor belts and catapults as you try to revive and prosper, hence the name of the game. Creativity is important here as you construct your thriving base in your own style, and you need to put an end to manual excavation by automating it with various digging and crafting machines. The catapults are a nice touch as well, which not many of these automation games involve catapults, so that's an interesting one. There are tireless golems that you can craft who will continue to work and repair and maintain things. But you also have to prepare for changing weather that can impact your base. And all of this is taking place in a living ecosystem. So if you get a bit too carried away, there may be consequences. So keep that in mind as you build and produce as much as you can. This is another one where you don't have to wait very long. It's planning to release into early access on the 5th of December 2023, with development continuing into 2024. So it's a little unclear when final release will be, but there is pretty much a plan for what they want to add. If you're unsure, however, at the time of recording, there is a free demo on Steam, so you can go ahead and check out Revive and Prosper to see if it's something you want to jump into at the start of Early Access, or maybe wait until it's more developed. And then for one that we've had a pretty good look at, Desynced. Here we have a sci-fi strategy game with fully customizable units and behaviors. You gather, build, research, and explore the world alone or with friends as you unveil the mystery of an AI on the edge of self-awareness and uncover the hidden truth in this blend of kind of strategy, kind of automation, kind of exploration type of game. So your ship has become damaged and you send drones to the surface of an unknown planet to build up the facilities and harvest the resources needed to repair. But are you truly ready for what you're going to find? Either way, this game is all about automation, customization, researching. Generally, it looks pretty good on the eyes as well. And there is modding support with Steam Workshop integration, so the community will be adding even more to this. Desynced released into early access towards the end of 2023, so it's been out for a little bit at this point, and it's received very positive reviews at about 85% at the time of making this video. And they are planning for a full release in 2024, but of course with any early access games, early days, it can take longer. But right now the plan is 2024 for a full release of Desynced. 
Next up, we've got one that's already kind of popular. Captain of Industry. You land your crew of survivors on an abandoned island and survive. You mine raw materials, grow food, build factories, manufacture goods, research new tech, and trade with others. The goal is to become an industrial superpower, but that's not gonna be easy. You have to not just grow and expand, but just kind of stay alive as well. You can easily see as much as you want of this game because it's been in early access since about the middle of 2022, so it's approaching two years in early access at the moment, and they are planning for two to three years in early access, meaning a 2024 full release is the idea for Captain of Industry, but we'll see if they can stick to that. In this game, you are manufacturing products, you build vehicles and transport the things you manufacture. There are, of course, conveyor belts and pipes for moving things around. And you mine resources on fully dynamic terrain, which changes as you mine things up. Don't forget the farming, the kind of city building aspect where you grow your settlement and provide for your people. There's complex oil and chemical refineries. There's trade and eventually you go to space. You research and develop your way to space flight and launching a rocket as a true test of your settlement's accomplishments. So all of this down here is to get up there. This game is already well liked, it's got thousands of user reviews on Steam at 90 plus percent positive, which I do know Steam user reviews are not the be all and end all of how good or bad a game is, but 90 plus percent positive generally means it's doing really well. So you can jump into Captain of Industry right now, it seems like a safe bet, or you can see if you want to wait for the full release, which should be in 2024. Automation Station. This is a more indie development where you explore a mysterious planet, harvest and refine resources, discover new technologies, craft machines, and set up automated factories. As the name implies, it's all about automation. Collecting, crafting, and innovating in an expanding world where you discover various things. There are lots of upgrades and vehicles to try out. And it's supposed to be a physics sandbox where resources and items can be neatly slotted into machines and conveyor belts for a tidy factory, or they can be freely dropped wherever. So the resources and the things that you're messing with aren't just like items that are dropped onto tiles, it's actually using a physics system, which does set it apart from many of the other games on this list. Now, this is a more indie development, so as you can see, there's no official trailer for me to show off. I can just show you these screenshots, but there's some nice GIFs that you can have a look on the Steam page, and there are regular dev logs which update how this game is going. But of course, being indie, we don't know when this will release, whether it'll go into early access or whatever, but it seems cool. It seems Seems interesting and it's still in development so we can keep an eye on automation station but until we can get our hands on it we can move on to the next game for another popular one plan b terraform you get to transform a lifeless rock into a lush and habitable world you build trucks trains and sprawling factories on an enormous hexagonal planet you grow its population to millions, and you can enjoy a dynamic simulation of atmosphere, temperature, water, and forests. This one is very cool and already very popular as it entered early access early in 2023. Two very positive reviews, another one already at 90 plus percent positive, and the plan is to fully release sometime early in 2024, but of course could take longer than that, but it should be a safe-ish bet that this is going to be a 2024 release. We'll see. So as is expected with these kind of games, you are extracting minerals, but the goal of this one is to terraform a planet. There are terraforming devices, such as greenhouse gas factories, to warm up the atmosphere, and you get to make it rain for rivers and oceans. So this kind of feels like, you know that game Terra Nil, where you're sort of restoring a barren environment? Well, this is sort of like that, but instead of a puzzle building game, it is more of a factory automation simulation game with some slight city building elements, which I'm sure you can see the appeal of, hence the popularity. So yeah, you can check this out right now, another safe bet if you want to jump into it, or you can wait for full release for Plan B Terraform. 
All right, now for a weird one, and I'm pretty sure this is the right genre, but it's kind of strange. It's called Moose Miners. In this game, you take control of a mining operation run by moose. They mine and sell gems, you need to decide where to spend the profits, and you hire more miners and upgrade their gear. You buy new rails and minecarts to get deeper into the mine, and the deeper you get into the mine, the more valuable gems you find. But of course, as you can see from the trailer, this one is not quite like the other games on the list. But I'm pretty sure it's still a factory slash automation slash production kind of simulation game. So you mine and collect all sorts of stuff, you process and sell your findings, and you expand your production to what seems like insane scales. There's 19 different gem types, there's a huge map with over 100 million gems to mine, and it has kind of a Dwarf Fortress-ish vibe to it, but it's moose and mining. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't know what to really say about this one, but maybe you're interested. Because there is a free demo on Steam, which I think for a game that looks as weird as this one, you need a free demo to see if it's actually something you want to do. So go ahead and try Moose Miners, and it might be something you're into, and it's planning to release in quarter 2 2024, in which case you can mine gems with moose. Meese. Mooses. Okay, I know it's been a while, but Dyson Sphere Program. This has been in early access since the start of 2021, so it has been a long time in development. And usually I don't keep listing games forever, but it's a factory games list and Dyson Sphere Program has overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam, 97% positive, so people love this one and it's getting some pretty big updates over the years. Now, if you don't know this game, this is a game where you build the most efficient intergalactic factory in space, where you harness the power of stars, collect resources, plan and design production lines, and develop your interstellar factory from a small space workshop to a galaxy-wide industrial empire. And this game has come a very long way since the beginning of Early Access. Most notably, the combat aspect has expanded a lot, and the combat system Rise of the Dark Fog is slated to release in December 2023. So it's still continuing to get big updates, and there's a lot more in the game now. If you haven't looked at the game for a couple years, then you might want to check back in. And, you know, it's still technically in early access, but the original plan was to only be in early access for one year, so it's just blasted well well past that, so who knows how long Dyson Sphere Program will stay in early access. It's one of those games where you can pretty much play it now and it feels complete. It's just continuing to get bigger updates. But on this particular factory list, I'm still gonna mention it because it's getting some game-changing big updates and it's a pretty popular factory game. Okay, now moving on to some first-person automation games, Astro Colony. Explore an endless universe and create the most efficient constellation of colonies. You build conveyor systems to automate production, take care of astronauts and their needs, and you establish new colonies as part of an intergalactic simulation. So this one has been in early access since the end of 2022, two very positive reviews, 80 plus percent, but they did say that they plan for the game to be in early access for about a year, and we are past that. So it should be early 2024 for a full release for Astro Colony, but we're not quite sure how long it'll take. Now, this game is a game of automation and exploration in an infinite procedurally generated universe with fully destructible voxel planets. This sounds like it's a lot. You move stations, you dock them and create a galaxy network there's a variety of biomes and hundreds of plants across the various planets you'll be exploring. There's of course conveyor belts and pipes for automation. You have to take care of your astronauts that you recruit and fulfill their needs with food and shelter. There's technologies to research. There is multiplayer for a co-op mode with your friends or join other hosted lobbies. And you traverse the universe, which is full of unexpected events and you get to discover unknown, dangerous things. So yeah, Astro Colony. It's a lot, it's very ambitious, it's going well so far in early access and should be releasing sometime over the next year. 
In a similar vein, Foundry. You build a factory in an infinite simulated voxel world. You mine resources, craft machinery, and automate your research to progress. Face logistical challenges by planning and building a conveyor belt and pipe network, manage a complex power system, and you expand your constantly growing production lines. So we kinda know how these games are going at this point. They're all sort of going in that satisfactory direction, but with their own twists and turns. In Foundry, you'll be automating everything, starting small and building up in a sci-fi factory. You expand worldwide in a procedurally generated voxel world, and each block can be destroyed and new blocks for terrain and buildings can be placed to shape the world to fit your desires. You could build a sprawling factory on a mountain, in the jungle, or in the deepest mine. And there is multiplayer, you can play together. So you can go it alone or play co-op with your friends with up to four players. And interestingly, they allow LAN, which not all multiplayer games allow these days. But if you have a LAN setup, you can play Foundry over a LAN connection. I kind of miss those days. Those were good days. LAN parties. You could have a LAN party with Foundry. <laughs> But yeah, overall this one does look like it's got a lot of promise. It is just coming soon at the moment, but it does plan to release into early access. So we probably won't get the full version in 2024 as they plan to stay in early access for more than a year, but it looks like it's come a long way already, so we can expect to have it playable in early access in 2024 and then maybe 2025 for a full release for Foundry. Then we have Tectonica, a first-person factory automation game, but this one is set beneath the surface of an alien planet. You work alone or in co-op to build factories, gather resources, research new technologies, and you mold the destructible terrain, establish a base of operations, and uncover long-forgotten secrets. We know the drill, <laughs> get it, of Tectonica in this style of game, but the thing that sets this one apart is one, the environments are just really beautiful. It looks really nice, it looks really alien, and there is a unique kind of interesting story to go along with it. As you go through and build things, you're also uncovering these mysteries and characters. But of course, the core gameplay is building machines, automating everything, creating sprawling factories, exploring and discovering what lies in this underground alien world where you can dig anywhere with a black hole gun. So, you know, it's a gun that just sucks up whatever you want. And you uncover the sci-fi mystery of what really happened on this alien planet. So Tectonica has been in early access for a little bit at this point, since the middle of 2023. And I know this is a list for 2024, but this one is already starting to take off, so I'm going to include it here because people are playing it now, but it's in development through 2024. However, it has to be said that full release, they are being generous with their time here. Full release is planned for after three years of early access, so they're not planning to finish Tectonica until 2026. However, with many of these sorts of simulation games, they tend to be kind of finished games already early on. You know, Factorio itself took eight years to finish, but you know, people were playing and enjoying it like a finished game way before then. So I'm gonna list Tectonica right now for 2024 because it is definitely playable and it's received very positive reviews, 80 plus percent already. So it's going well. And if you want to jump into early access, you can do it now. But if you're waiting for full release, then it's gonna be some years for Tectonica. Then of course, after all of those games, I just have to mention Satisfactory. We all know about this one. It's been in early access since the middle of 2020. So we're approaching four years in early access. It is very, very popular. It's got overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam, over 100,000 user reviews at 97% positive, but it's still technically in early access, so here it is. But I don't think you need me to tell you much about this game. I mean, it's a first person automation factory resource gathering world exploration on an alien planet kind of game. And I think it's sort of set off the trend of many of these other games we've been seeing towards the end of this list. And, you know, there's a big chance that since it's been so long that Satisfactory actually gets a 1.0 release in 2024. But I think at this point it doesn't really matter. 
because it's already so developed and there's already so much content and there's so much to do and it works in co-op multiplayer or you can play it solo. You know, there's factory building and vehicles and mining of resources on a massive world. So yeah, that's satisfactory. It's good. <laughs> You can check it out if you haven't already. I don't think you have to wait for 1.0 release. It's an early access and people are loving and playing Satisfactory more than many other released games already. So yeah, if you haven't checked out Satisfactory, go have a look at least because it's a safe bet because there's very little risk jumping into this game. So yeah, I think if you're not already, you can be very satisfied with Satisfactory. Okay, then for a bonus one, I'm going to mention Factorio, which of course, Factorio is not an upcoming game for 2024. However, there is one thing upcoming, which I think a lot of people weren't really banking on, which is an expansion. So Factorio is the factory game that basically blew up this subgenre of simulation games. I mean, factory conveyor belt games have always been a thing, but Factorio exploded. It was in development for like eight years, I think it was, and it just it's just so popular and it's exactly what it's supposed to be. Yeah, it's another one, 97% positive on Steam. It's good. There even is a free demo for you to try if you're not too sure, so you can just try it and then get it. If you haven't heard, the expansion on the way is called Factorio Space Age. The developer is now bringing you to space. The factory, the Factorio factory, onto a basically moving factory spaceship. And it's still early days, but there is a lot of information written out. You know, there's sort of a main structure and platforms and you build your factory on top of that platform. And you gather resources floating through space and use those to progress science. And there's a whole plan on how they're going to develop this. And also there's comparisons to what's already a space exploration mod, which is out there for Factorio, because modding is a thing for Factorio. But I think the main thing is to just look at this animation, sort of previewing what space age is going to be. And I think you can just judge from this image whether you're hyped or not. So yeah. Factorio, not an upcoming game, but this expansion is upcoming, and I thought I'd let you know in case you haven't heard. Alright, now we're getting into the tycoon section of the list, so all of these next games are gonna be business tycoon kind of games. The first tycoon game we've got is Potion Tycoon. Here's a management simulator with a witchy twist. Build and develop your very own magic shop. Manage resources, set up production lines, mix potions, and sell them smartly to stay ahead of the competition. Welcome to the potion business. This game is all about building up your shop, producing a bunch of potions, selling those potions, and using the profits to expand your business. But besides the business side, there's going to be some experimentation, researching, and managing to figure out what ingredients work and how to come up with new products to sell. Overall, you're going to build up your shop to be massive and seek your fame and fortune. Through the game, there's going to be some dynamic events, market trends, and competing companies, so you're not just going to be able to do whatever you want. This is business. It is going to be competition. But it's all in this fantastical, magical, witchy world in a 2D hand-drawn aesthetic, which is really nice to look at, actually. Now, this game has been in early access since early 2023 with a couple hundred mostly positive reviews. So going through early access, this game is going well so far, and it is targeting a 2024 release window. So you can jump in now if you are intrigued, or you can wait for the full release, which should happen over the next six months to a year. Speaking of a hand-drawn aesthetic, this one looks different. It's called Might of Merchants. This one combines an economic and trading simulation game with some role-playing elements in a medieval kingdom. Experience a unique and lovingly hand-drawn world, which you will have to prove your skills as the best trader. 
So this game is all about becoming a successful merchant and uh, you have to pay attention to your environment because supply and demand will determine prices and your opportunity to do business. As you do that business, you'll be able to expand, constructing new buildings, making things more attractive, and protecting against uh, threats such as burglary, sickness, and fire, which all could take your medieval business empire to the ground. Besides all that, it's not just about you. You are not just building a business here, you're building a business dynasty. You get to rise in politics and demonstrate your diplomatic skills to influence decisions and laws to try and take advantage. Ah, true capitalism. Not just doing the best business, but making the game easier for yourself. Alright, so this game is made by a solo developer, but overall it does seem pretty impressive considering that. I mean, nothing else really looks like this. It's a top-down, hand-drawn style, and its monochromatic, sketchy look is gonna set itself apart from uh, not just anything else in this list, but most games in general. So I would keep an eye on this one. There's no particular release window. It's a solo dev, so it could go into early access. It could be a, a year or so from now. But Might of Merchants is intriguing, to say the least, and I'm gonna personally keep my eye on this one. For a more modern business trend, Food Truck Empire. Become the ultimate food truck tycoon. Create your fleet, manage menus, optimize your mobile kitchens and conquer the streets. From cheap burgers to gourmet masterpieces. From shady alleys to posh neighborhoods. Find your customers, fill their bellies, and build your food truck empire, as is the title of the game. So this is obviously about food trucks, and not just one. This is a proper tycoon game, so it is gonna be about your fleet, right? A whole bunch of food trucks under your control, which, all of which, you can customize everything. You know, the interiors, the colors, the designs, the, the uh, all of it. All of it is up to you to take advantage of your surrounding environments. You know, don't try and sell posh food in the cheaper neighborhoods. They won't be able to afford the food. Also, it's kind of just not what people are looking for. You know, consider supply and demand. And of course, as is the real life food truck business, competition abound. You're gonna have to dominate the landscape in spite of all the competitors which do not want you on the scene. You could increase your quality or simply undercut their prices. That's up to you. That's your tycoon decisions. Now, this does look like a charming little low poly game. And I do know low poly, it's an art style that a lot of people are averse to. But overall, it does seem pretty pleasant to look at. And it's a food truck tycoon game. So the aesthetic does pretty much fit. Could be a nice little indie experience. So let me know what you think about Food Truck Empire. Going back to a medieval world, it's Innkeeper. Embody an innkeeper in a unique first-person management game set in a medieval fantasy world. You build your inn, adapt to your clientele, and establish a thriving economy all out of your inn. Now, the unique thing here is that it's first person, and first person management tycoon business games sort of vibe different. You'll be able to interact with your customers, merchants, and unique characters as they come and go, and your own character evolves over time as you develop your establishment. You gain experience, leveling up to improve your character across 13 different skill types, along with passive and active effects. You get to hire employees, you get to expand your inn, dig a basement, make your own furniture, set up tasks, fish in the nearby stream, play money games with your customers, as, you know, it's a medieval inn. You gotta have some money-based games. Deal with customers getting drunk, craft recipes, experience weather and day-night cycles. I mean, there's a lot to this game, which is probably why it's low-poly graphics, to accommodate all of those gameplay features. However, having said that, this is more of an indie development, 
And I've actually been watching this game for a while now, and it's still not released into early access, and it is going to release into early access. And after that point, they're planning for a year to game's launch. So I would expect to see this playable over the next year, but you know, even if they stick to their schedule, it might take a bit longer than 2024 to fully release. And of course, as a, a more indie development like this, it could take even longer. You're never too sure about early access games, but this does seem like it's got some very good ideas to it. It's just how it's all implemented and whether it's refined up to your standards. So we will see how Innkeeper does over the coming year, and then maybe judge it then. For another potion making game, it's the Magical Mixture Mill. Gather exotic ingredients, brew complex mixtures, and expand your magically automated production lines, keeping your shelves stocked, your customers happy, and your pockets full. And the interesting thing is your customers are actually like RPG characters going on adventures, and they have their own classes. So there's like a necromancer, there's a barbarian, there's a paladin, and they will come into your shop expecting certain types of potions and certain qualities. Crafting is a big deal for this game as well, because you don't just craft the potions using various ingredients to increase their potency, but also the bottles themselves are part of the marketing and branding. You can put cheap potions in fancy golden vials and sell them for more even though they're useless. <laughs> That's what the tycoon business games are all about. Now, I am very tempted to not just have this as a tycoon game, but also put this maybe in the simulation list because it's got a sort of light factory simulation setup as well. You do have to put up production chains, conveyor belts, manufacturing facilities, and there's also a life sim aspect of you going around the world talking to characters. You know, a survival aspect where you, you do pass out and you need to eat things to, to keep your energy up and stuff like that. So there's a lot to this game, and I've played the demo before, which for full transparency I was sponsored to show off, but I'm not sponsored to show the game off here. But overall the game in the demo was looking pretty decent. It's currently in early access with few but very positive reviews, 80 plus percent positive, and they were aiming to have a full release candidate of the game by 2023, but we're approaching the end of the year now and I'm gonna say it's most likely gonna be a 2024 release. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna expect that. So this game is slowly shaping up and it could be cool. There is footage of it out there if you want to see a more proper look. But for now, the Magical Mixture Mill seems to have a decent start and is slowly reaching towards its goals. One more game that's reaching towards its goals. Big Ambitions. This is a role-playing business sim. You go from nothing to the biggest entrepreneur in New York by opening a small business or businesses and slowly building up to huge corporations any way you like. This is supposed to be a huge business sandbox kind of game where you can open any kind of business you like from single shops to chains or fast food franchises to huge corporations making millions, developing websites or whatever else you want. And for these businesses you get to customize them to a very deep level, not just in terms of the design of the logo to the branding, but also how you start the business. Do you take out a loan? Do you renovate the store? How do you get stock? Do you manage money? How much staff do you hire? Do you need infrastructure? All that stuff is in your control as you slowly grow your businesses up to empire status. And just as a side note, this is also a bit of a life sim. You are the tycoon person in this game, so you need to eat food. So you need to go to the supermarket or maybe order food. <laughs> you know, you, you, gotta, uh, you, you gotta live in New York City and eventually you want to own New York City. All building up to retirement, I guess. So this game does have big ambitions, as the title says, and it's been going through early access since early 2023, and so far it's been achieving those ambitions. It's got very positive reviews, thousands of them, 90 plus percent. This game is knocking it out of the park, 
And although they do say that it is 24 months from the start of early access to full release, which would be early 2025, it's playable now and will be very much playable through 2024. And considering that it's already a success, it should just be getting better from here on out. So big ambitions are reaching for those ambitions and achieving those ambitions so far. If you've played it, let me know what you think. And if you haven't played it, this seems like a safer bet to check out if you're looking for a new tycoon business game to play. And then for a tycoon game that's had its ups and downs, Hotel Magnate. A game where you design and manage your own hotel, rundown motel, or elegant resort with a ridiculous amount of customization tools to wield being promised to you, a host of facilities to build, and a wide variety of guests to impress. You are meant to let your inner hotel manager shine. Now unfortunately, this game has somewhat mixed reviews, not too bad, still 60 plus percent of the few hundred reviews it's gotten on Steam so far in early access, but it's not off to a roaring start. It's been in early access since late 2021, so it's been a couple years now, and they were supposed to fully release by 2022, so they're already a year past their initial estimate. But updates are still coming, the, the game is still being developed and being updated, so it's not all bad. And the idea of the game is pretty good, it's, it's, it's promising everything to do with a hotel, restaurants, kitchen and laundry, bars, nightclubs, pools, gyms, spars, staff rooms, everything is supposed to be here to do with a hotel anyway. It's just, it seems like it's coming along rather slowly, if, if nothing else and a little rough when it, uh, it, it it didn't hit the ground running. So this is probably one to watch for now to see whether it develops better over the next year, and it could turn out to be something pretty decent. Otherwise, even as it stands right now, 60 plus percent is still 6 out of 10. It's fine at the moment, so you might want to have a look at it if uh, you're into hotel management. Otherwise, we can check back with Hotel Magnate later. Next up, we've got one that looks kind of like an interesting twist on Sim Tower. It's called News Tower. Develop your newspaper and become New York's new media mogul. In this tycoon game, you build and manage your newspaper from printer to toilet. Create your editorial line and lead your journalists through unique 1930s stories and dig out the latest scoops. So it's kind of like Sim Tower plus Newsies, I guess. <laughs> and that's an interesting premise. You do run it like a tycoon game. You're trying to establish your newspaper, make a lot of money, get everything going, make yourself famous and an authority figure in New York City. And I suppose the tycoon you're playing here is a kind of 30s J. Jonah Jameson. <laughs> Now, this game is set to release into early access in the, at the beginning of 2024, with up to a year in development. So right now, the goal for this game is to release sometime by the end of 2024 or early 2025, while being playable through 2024. So we'll see if it can stick to that schedule. Overall, so far from what we've seen, it looks pretty good. It seems to have all the ideas there, it just needs to come together and deliver what's being promised, because I think a lot of people will be into this game as long as it just is what it says it is. Uh, you know, that's, that's hard enough to do already, I think. So as long as it just sticks to what it's presenting, I think News Tower could be a pretty good tycoon business game moving forward, if they deliver on their promises. Weirdly, in a similar vein, is Yakuza Empire. Ruthlessness, ambition, and determination. Just some of the things you'll need if you want to make it in the unforgiving criminal underworld. This game is a strategy management tycoon game about Japan's most feared gang, and you have to see if you have what it takes to survive and thrive in the criminal business. As you can see, this one also has a tower management kind of thing, and there's some turn-based combat. <laughs> like, there's, there's a lot to this game which makes it very difficult to 
to put in any kind of genre. But I think essentially it is still a business management game where you train and employ your people, you build your headquarters, and you run your business to try and turn a profit. It's just, you know, there's rivals trying to kill you. So there's turn-based combat and you have to fight them off and you have to make sure that everything is going, uh, well, as properly as it can be in this kind of business. Also, this is all set in an early 90s aesthetic, so that's a nice nostalgia trip. Now, despite how interesting this looks, it has to be said that at the moment it's just coming soon. And there's no particular release window for this. And there's a chance, there's always a chance with these games, that this is just a trailer set to see if it generates any interest and they don't actually make the game unless it generates the interest. I've seen a lot of games from these particular publishers where some of them do get made and turn out well, others are just trailers. So Yakuza Empire could be a very interesting game to see in 2024 if we see it at all. But I did want to let you know about it because of the tycoon games out there, this one seems to have a solid idea. Now, going way, way cuter than Yakuza, it's Townseek. Embark on a journey across the world of Explorer and discover the lost legacy of Sir Reginald Sharkingston. Discover exotic landmarks, trade with faraway towns, fish, mine, and farm as you complete your journal and make a name for yourself. So this one is more of an adventure kind of, well, move around the picturesque cartoony world, but you are uh, still a business person trading with the towns and building your reputation and, and unlocking cosmetics for your ships and stuff like that. Meeting diverse cultures, from cat people to slimes to stonelings to just regular humans and more. The ultimate goal is to complete your journal, which is supposed to be filled with memories and unforgettable adventures as you travel through the world. And what a world it is. Nothing else on this list quite looks like this. So this is sort of a tycoon business game, sort of an adventure game, but uh, I think at the core of it, you are still running a kind of trading business. <laughs> so I'm going to put it here. It's an interesting game and you can see what it's like on the screen right now. It should be releasing sometime early 2024 based on what they're saying right now. And that's Townseek. With a similar aesthetic, we've got Dealer's Life Legend. Undertake the perilous quest of the wandering merchant and become a legend by haggling and dealing and trading. That's the dealer's life. So in this game, you are a traveling merchant going from city to city while growing your wares and riches. So it's sounding a bit similar to the last game, but in this one, your goal is to reach the capital and winning the wandering merchant quest. Though you do have to be careful as you go through this world, because the peaceful and prosperous empire might not be quite what it seems. There are whispers of deception, tyranny, and rebellion. But the important thing for you is riches. So you are supposed to take advantage of whatever you come across and be the best merchant you can be through negotiation, psychology, and management skills, all to become a trading legend. Running it all out of your wagon. You can hire companions, use magic items, and as you go through the world, you uncover the true story of the empire and choose who to side with. I really like the premise of this game. It is still a business tycoon game, but it's tied up into this political intrigue of this uh, mysterious empire. And although it is more of a cartoony aesthetic, it does have a seriousness to it, which I do appreciate how they're, they're striking that balance. The release window for Dealer's Life Legend is sometime in 2024 right now. So we'll see if we get to have a closer look at this game over the coming year and whether we'll be able to get our hands on playing it. For another Potion Tycoon game, it's Alchemist the Potion Manga. First person alchemist simulator with RPG elements, explore the world, gather ingredients, and sell or use potions you craft to help others to fend off enemies. Adopt pets to help you with your alchemy knowledge, and you can pet them. 
decorate your home however you like, and brew your destiny. Potion making games have definitely become more popular in recent years and, well, it's always good to have another one and this sort of feels like the previous potion game but in first person and, you know, that could be enough of a twist to make this game for you. In this game you'll be selling your brews, you can use the potions you brew yourself to power yourself up as you explore the world and discover alchemical ingredients and recipes. Now this game is going into early access but at the time of recording there is also a free demo on Steam. So you can check out Alchemist the Potion manga right now with the free demo and when it goes through early access we'll see how it develops and how it's received as it is planning to go for six to nine months in early access so the game should release fully in 2024. For another tavern game but not from a first person perspective it's Tavern Keeper. Build and manage your own tavern in this charming fantasy business sim. Dive into every detail or relax and decorate to your heart's desire. It's your tavern. You run it how you like. You can upgrade your tavern, navigate light-hearted fairy tales of unlikely heroes, and you play the most important role of all, the tavern keeper. Now there's supposed to be a lot of details to running your tavern here. Your janitor can get sick, you know, the fireplace could spark and cause a fire. There can be infections and plagues going around, and your clientele have personality traits so things could get interesting. And also the level of detail you can customize your tavern to is pretty insane. You can place a single candle on a table or turn a chair to a specific direction or build a pillow fort. So you'll be able to be creative with your inn while you run it as a business, but also have it as an artistic expression to share with the community. Generally, Tavern Keeper is looking very interesting, very good so far. Based on the trailer and the screenshots, the aesthetic is sort of low poly, but a very nice color palette. So it, it's got this, it, it just looks kind of good actually. And the gameplay promises a lot of detail and creativity, which is always really nice. So this is another game where all it has to do is be what it says it will be. And then Tavern Keeper could be a very big success. That's all you gotta do. Have a good idea and execute the idea. <laughs> simple, isn't it? It's simple, but not always easy. But Tavern Keeper does seem like it's on the right track. We'll see how it goes through 2024. Next is probably the most hyped for Tycoon game moving forward at the moment anyway. It's Nivalis. You grow your business, manage restaurants and nightclubs, make friends and enemies, buy and decorate apartments, go fishing and maybe even find love in Nivalis, a city that stretches from the ocean to the clouds in this cyberpunk business simulator. Now making it in a cyberpunk city isn't easy by any stretch of the imagination, let alone as a business person. And there's gonna be gangs who want your organs, corporations who will fine you for breathing the wrong time, and things are generally falling apart at the seams. You gotta start small in this game, a food stall, a noodle stand, a stim store, something like that to get your feet wet in the cyberpunk city of Nivalis. And as you do your business, you slowly grow and expand as you meet new characters, you can form friendships and partnerships. So eventually you will become like those corporations yourself, but at the start you gotta buy or grow your own ingredients and meet whoever you can on the streets. I mean, this game looks great. A cyberpunk tycoon business sim with some life sim elements. <laughs> it looks great. It's like a first person game. It's basically like, I mean, imagine Cyberpunk 2077, but as a business sim, I mean, it, it's, it's just kind of interesting. Now, we haven't seen all that much from it right now, but there's so much hype and so much promise for Nivalis that I really want to see this succeed. I really hope it does because it looks like it could be such a fun game to play. But it's coming in 2024 and we haven't been able to get our hands on it so far. So uh, when, it, when it arrives, I will definitely be having a closer look at Nivalis. Hopefully they reveal more of the gameplay, like maybe some more raw gameplay moving forward. But for now, we're gonna have to keep an eye on Nivalis. 
After that, a subgenre of simulation games are god games. And I know the definition of god game is a little bit contentious, but I want to point out that if you look it up, that generally Spore is considered a god game. Back in its day and today, if you look up the definition of god games, Spore is often used as a prime example. Which might surprise many of you, but here we go, a bunch of god game simulations. In the beginning, we have Reyes 2. Shape humanity with the power of the gods in Reyes 2. Choose your giants, combine natural elements and manipulate fate to guide the path of civilization. The choices are yours and so are the consequences. This game puts you in control of mighty giants that shape the planet for humans to live, grow and wage war on. Your choices will explore the fate of humanity across the cosmos of your creation, experimenting with civilization and seeing what human tribes will achieve with the right combination of elements. You get to plan and discover strategic synergies and watch humanity evolve and learn as it reaches for the stars, all while you're controlling giants, experimenting with natural resources and leave a lasting legacy. This game is about sort of coming up with your own goals, as many god games are, the objectives are whatever you design them to be, and you get to see how the simulation plays out based on the choices you make. The original Reyes did go down pretty well, so a lot of people are looking forward to this sequel. And even if you're not into the whole cartoony look of this game, it might be an interesting checkout. Continuing to watch over a civilization, it's a micro-civilization. This one is calling itself an incremental clicker strategy, but this is where you expand, construct, research, fight, collect heroes and make choices between good and evil. You ascend through difficulty tiers by playing through the challenge campaign, going back and forth through history. So this is sort of combining 4x strategy with uh, clicking on things, and you'll witness the rise and fall of civilizations. You could guide your civilization to become obscenely rich and powerful and maybe fall to the hundreds of disasters, wars, disease, social unrest, invasions, and so much more. You'll have to take risks and maybe you will prevail and eventually ascend to the stars. So the unique thing here, first of all, is just the way this game looks. It's a pixel art game, but it's really nice and it sort of has this muted aesthetic which lends itself to perhaps the bleakness of the constant falls of civilization. Now we all miss Spore, so how about Elysian Eclipse? This is a sandbox evolution simulator which lets you evolve from an amoeba into a space-traveling sentient being. You create your own creatures, buildings and vehicles to conquer procedural planets and turn the galaxy into your personal playground. This sounds like an intended spiritual successor for Spore, for sure. But Spore is such a huge thing to live up to, even though Spore itself sort of didn't exactly end up what it was supposed to be, the expectations to surpass Spore with a new game are immense. This one brings you through all the expected phases, cell, aquatic, creature, tribal, medieval, civilization, and finally the space stage. So it's all supposed to be there, but this is going to be a long-term project. It is meant to be going into early access at some point, likely over the next year-ish, but the final release window is supposed to be 2027, so this is going to be one of those independent games which may or may not turn out to be absolutely amazing, but it should become playable soon, and then we'll see how it goes over the following years. If it hits the ground running, this could be something very special, but it might just fall flat as well. But, you know, we'll see how it goes for Elysian Eclipse. In a similar vein, but focusing down onto a smaller set of phases, adapt. To survive, you must guide your species through a constantly changing world, compete with strange creatures for food and territory, and find your niche through careful evolutionary choices. The real question is not if you can survive, but for how long. So it is saying, pretty much as natural selection goes, 
every species comes to an end. Unless I guess you're a shark. <laughs> So Adapt is a survival evolution game with a constantly changing environment. You are meant to create your creature and iterate on its design and try to survive and thrive in the ecosystem. With the numerous adaptations, you're supposed to have diverse play styles and plant life will exhibit seasonal behaviors and growth. So you don't get seeds and fruits all seasons, which is going to make things kind of complicated for you to survive. You can hunt or be hunted. And overall, this seems like a nice creature designer survival kind of simulation. So although this is not the entire spectrum of Spore's phases from, you know, the amoeba into space, this does sort of focus on the creature aspect. And I think that actually kind of taps into what a lot of people are looking for. A lot of people played Spore and they just preferred the single cell phase up until the creature phase and maybe the tribal phase, but a lot of people sort of didn't like it when it went into the civilization and space phase, so maybe Adapt is sort of going into the more appropriate direction and focusing on what people loved most about Spore and leaving out the rest. Having said that, this does have a sort of a more cartoony look, which may or may not appeal to you. But I think if you don't like it, and you can just ignore the visual style for now, this might be something very interesting. At the time of recording, there isn't too much to say about it, because we've only seen so much, and there's no particular release window, it's just coming soon, though I do expect we will see a lot more of Adapt moving forward. Thrive. We are continuing the Spore theme, and this one is an evolution simulation game. You take control of your species in the environment and edit your species as a whole. Compete with other evolving species for resources on an alien planet. Through this game, you will be controlling an individual member of your species as you hunt and be hunted and scavenge for resources. You get to edit your species to make it more successful over time. You explore different biomes, fight other cells and multicellular beings. You learn about biology by using real compounds. So this is an evolution game where it's sort of backed up by actual science and you spread your species across the planet via the bio map. So for the Spore spiritual successes, this one is kind of leaning more to the scientific approach to natural selection and evolution. Now, this one has had some time to prove itself. It's been in early access since the end of 2021, so it's been a couple years playable at this point. And it's been getting regular-ish updates over the years. And at the time of recording, it's received a good few hundred user reviews on Steam with 90 plus percent positive. So overall, people are liking this one, but it is sort of taking its time through early access. I mean, in the approximately how long will this game be in early access, the developer actually says it could take up to 150 months. We're talking a 12 year development cycle. So hey, just another decade to go for Thrive to fully release, but you know, it's playable now, so you can look it up, you can see what it is, and it's not exactly an expensive game. It's an indie development, so that's why it's taking a long time, and it's not the only indie development to take 10 years to finally reach 1.0 release. So if you're intrigued about Thrive, you can look it up, see if you want to jump in now, or you know, you could just check back at any point in the future and see how it's doing. And then we have The Sapling. This is a short simulation game where you design your own plants and animals, and you put them in a world together and see how the simulation plays out. You could also turn on random mutations and see what evolution does to your ecosystem. So this is a spore-like game where you're more in control of the entire environment, but also you can sort of let the game do what it wants and let random mutations and natural selection kind of figure out what it's going to do. So you could let the simulation run and find yourself with very interesting and different scenarios. This one also allows you to design algae and plants, so it's not just the animals and creatures you're designing here, and I think this is the only game that sort of allows you to do that, where you can design the plants and really have full control over the entire ecosystem. But also, you know, this is more of an indie development, so it has been in early access for a while now, since the end of 2019. 
So it's been multiple years that this has been in early access, so it's not exactly a new, new game. But I wanted to tell you about it in this list anyway because, you know, we're looking at spiritual successes to god games and stuff like that, so The Sapling is one of them. Having been in early access for that long, it's received multiple hundreds of user reviews on Steam, with 90% plus positive, so people are also enjoying this one. Though there is no particular release window or estimate for how long this game will be in early access, so it's just gonna be another one of those indie ongoing developments, which may be interesting for you to keep an eye on. Okay, then I want to mention one more Spore-ish like game called Creature Sim. This one is very indie. It's not even on Steam or anything. There's just an own independent kind of website thing. And it's sort of like a Spore-ish kind of game. But you know, this is very, very indie, very... You know, very few updates coming for this game, but it does look kind of interesting. And maybe one day, Creature Sim will turn out to be something kind of interesting. I just want to put it on your radar, but I also want to say that you don't have to keep too close an eye on this one because it's, you know, it's under development for a long time and it may or may not release. It might just end at some point or go silent forever, but it is a game out there that I want to mention because it is a Spore spiritual successor by another indie developer. But, you know, that's about it for Creature Sim. So let's move on to another kind of god game. Alright, I can't believe I'm still talking about this. It is the Universe Sim. This is a civilization simulation god game where you jump straight into managing your own planets as you guide a civilization through the ages. You build the ultimate empire in this new breed of god game development. So this game has been going for a long time. I've talked about it multiple times before. It's been in early access since 2018 and we've been talking about it since even before then. And it had a rough start. There, it was very bare bones at the start of early access and there were a lot of things that were just not quite there. I actually have some videos on the universe sim. Over the years, this has begun to develop into something very big and quite well liked. It's received thousands of user reviews on Steam with 80 plus percent positive, so that's still relatively good. And I do know Steam user reviews aren't a perfect indicator for how good or bad a game is, but it's an indicator. And in this game, you are a god guiding a species and sort of not really direct control, but also kind of have quite a bit of direct control, but you sort of guide your civilization along its path. And it has sort of that slight good and evil approach as you go through the ages from the ancient Stone Age into the future Space Age. Because this has been in early access for so long, there's a lot of information about the universe sim, and I don't think I have to spend too much talking about it. And if you've been waiting for full release, well, I think it might actually be finally a good finished game for you to jump into. Now, going a bit different, it's a bit hard for me to classify this game. It's called These Doomed Isles. You harvest cards to raise land from the sea, and you build settlements and rain fire upon invaders in a survival city builder-ish with roguelike deck building mechanics as you choose from three gods with three different playstyles, and you lead your civilization to victory in a strategic run-based game. Is this a god game? Is it a city builder? Is it a card game? Is it a... a I, I just don't really know how to classify this, but it kind of feels like it fits into this list the best, so I'm gonna tell you about it here. So as I mentioned, there are a lot of elements to this, but essentially you are the god guiding this civilization. So this makes it a god game in my eyes. And it just entered early access on Steam to mostly positive reviews. But it's early days and they say it's meant to be in early access for about a year, so it is building up to a full release in 2024. So, if you're intrigued with these Doomed Isles, I would recommend you have a look at it. If anything, it's just kind of different in the genre and might have some interesting ideas. So you can go check out these Doomed Isles, or we can move on to the next game. So next I want to talk about Doodle God Universe. 
This one's also kind of a weird one. You have four basic elements, an empty planet and plenty of time. Not that that's enough to create the universe, but you'll be using your intelligence and imagination as you combine air, water, fire and earth to create hundreds of new elements to make your planet come alive. This is sort of a proper, more 3D version of that game where you combine elements. I forgot what it's called, but you combine those elements and you try and find all the different combinations to sort of figure out it as a puzzle game. But this time, this is more of a kind of a god evolution game-ish kind of thing. I mean, it looks kind of interesting. It looks really weird at times. And it says eventually you'll end up with over 400 unique elements and 700 plus unique reactions for you to experiment with and explore as you build up this planet and it progresses into developing all kinds of things. <laughs> it's a weird one. Now, officially, right now, at the time of recording, it is saying that this is going to have a 2023 release window, but there's no specific date right now and we are approaching the end of the year. So this might release towards the end of 2023, but I'll count it as a 2024 game anyway, because we'll do most of the playing in 2024. Also, there is a free demo. So as with many of these weird games, it's very good that they have a free demo because it's hard to explain exactly what it is. And also, if you're not too sure if it's a game for you, you can just try the free demo and see if you like it. So go ahead and check out Doodle God Universe if you're confused. With more evolution, but more on the environment, it's ecosystem. Grow and modify an ecosystem with simulated evolution by natural selection, creating the life forms that inhabit it. All the creatures that you see in the footage you're seeing right now supposedly evolved on their own in-game. None of them were hand-edited, so that means that this is really sort of focusing on the evolution, simulation, natural selection kind of process where you could get some very crazy things that eventually turn out to be very successful creatures because the non-successful creatures would just die out. So the creatures here have a kind of synthetic DNA system and it's all simulated including the creatures brains and nervous systems and DNA and all of that. Even the muscles and how the creatures physically move around are bound by the laws of physics. So this is very interesting in terms of a god game where you can kind of just watch what the simulation comes up with and you could end up with very cool or just very bizarre things. It, it sounds like it could be a cool time. Now, this game has been in early access since 2021, with a few hundred very positive reviews so far on Steam. So it's been a while and it's not super popular, but it was supposed to be in early access for about a year and a half. So we're kind of past that date right now. But it should mean that it's getting closer and closer to becoming more complete. But it also means you can jump in right now if you just want to mess around with this ecosystem. This sort of feels more like a simulation rather than a game game. But yeah, it's interesting. And then for a game that is already a massive success, World Box God Simulator. This is supposed to be the ultimate god simulator and sandbox game. A petri dish for your fantasy civilizations where you can create your own world or destroy it using powers. And you can watch civilizations grow, form kingdoms, colonize new lands, sail to far continents, go to war and see empires rise and fall. All while you're just watching from the sky and maybe pulling a few strings. So it is a god simulator, so you have a bunch of powers in your toolkit. It's a living world, so everything is simulated in terms of growth and expansion. Also, this is a fantasy game, so the civilizations you're watching are humans, orcs, elves, and dwarves, each with their own traits. They have a diplomacy system, so they will actually interact with each other. And there's a lot of procedural generation to keep things looking natural. Now, this game has been in early access since the end of 2021, so it's been a couple years, but it's received tens of thousands of user reviews on Steam at 95% positive. Like, this game is a massive success already, and it's been going very, very well. 
Now it does say it's supposed to be in early access for two years, which means the end of 2023 is the original release window for a full 1.0 release, but uh, it might go a little bit longer than that. If not a lot longer than that, but you know, it's already a success. So this is one of those early access games where you don't really have to wait for full release. It's already something that is very popular, very well liked and quite well developed. So you can jump in now. But if it sticks roughly to its release window, it should fully release sometime in 2024. But you can never guess these things. So I don't think you have to wait for full release if you want to jump into World Box God Simulator. And then for the game most inspired by black and white, Fata Deum. This game lets you mold your settlements and townsfolk in your image. You could raise settlements to splendor or spur them into violent debauchery and demons, as there is an alignment system between good and evil. Much like the old black and white, that's always fun. And your people exist in a living world that grows under your whims. You can be good or very bad. As you manage your mana to manipulate your settlement's devotees, and you can amass power, giving you bigger and better abilities. You can lead your people to conquer your rivals, or you could convince other people to join you. And you can frighten or foster your own people, as you shape a living world and experience your story as a god. So this one, of course, is very, very exciting, but it sort of had a rough-ish start. There was a demo a while ago, but it was very laggy for me, and it didn't really feel all that great. It has been a while since then, and it's been picked up by a publisher, so there is a lot of development going on for Fata Deum right now. So it seems to be turning out to be a lot better than the demo that I tried before this. So it's still very exciting to watch, and it's currently scheduled to release sometime in 2024, which is when we may get something that sort of lives up to the old black and white. Ah, oh, black and white. It's such a fascinating game. Black and White 1, of course, better than Black and White 2, but still, that sort of gameplay has not really been in existence for many years. And Fata Deum is our best bet for a spiritual successor to Black and White right now, and I hope it turns out to be something good. I really hope it does. But all we can do is see how Fata Deum turns out when it releases in 2024. Moving on from the omnipotent, we're going to something a bit more practical with train games. This next set of games are train-based games, and here's where simulation and simulator kind of becomes a bit of a problem, because simulation games tend to be a bit more gamey, light-hearted, maybe not so tied to realism kind of stuff, and simulators tend to be very grounded in reality, they tend to be as realistic as they possibly can, or at least try to give the vibe that they are realistic, like Power Wash Simulator. But if you were to imagine Power Wash Tycoon, it's going to be a completely different game, right? But train games have a very loyal and invested fan base. So I'm going to mention some simulators in the train section because they were so highly requested when I talked about train games in the past. Keeping that in mind, Century of Steam. This is a physics-based multiplayer railroad simulator and strategy game. Build your route through beautiful landscapes, customize and operate your fleet of historic trains, and you discover the sights, sounds, and stories of railroading with industry-leading steam, firing, and audio simulation. I mean, that pretty much says what this is. You are going to be working with historical equipment between 1869 and 1969, so a good century there, and you'll be running these trains through what's supposed to be beautiful landscapes, and just everything is supposed to be as realistic as possible. From what we've seen, it does look really nice, and if you're into historical trains, then this is going to be right up your alley. There's no particular release window for Century of Steam right now, but it's one that we can keep an eye on. And then we have SimRail. Now, I'm not too much of a fan of the title of this game sounding like the old Maxis Sim games, but this one has entered early access and it seems like it's quite popular. 
SimRail is an advanced railway simulator. You master high-speed, long-distance EMU, heavy freight hauls, and suburban trains. You travel 500 kilometers of geodetic data based on real routes, and you become a train dispatcher and control the traffic according to the schedule, or you can cooperate with other players in multiplayer mode to mix up your organization and scheduling with other people. Now, this one entered early access at the start of 2023, so it's been a year plus at this point, but it's got a few thousand reviews and it's at 91% positive in general, so it's going quite well. It is supposed to be fully releasing in quarter one or quarter two of 2024, so the first half of the year, I'm going to guess quarter two, if it sticks to its schedule anyway. But generally, SimRail does seem to be quite well liked and people kept mentioning it. So here you go. Then we have Railroads Online. You build your dream railroad across a huge open world. You can build tracks and stations, you can drive detailed locomotives and transport goods to earn money and experience. This one also has an online multiplayer mode where you can play with friends and create your very own single player sandbox. Now this is where these sorts of lists sort of struggle a little bit into getting into the detail of all of these games. If I were to just briefly spend a minute or two on each of these games, the last few train games all sound pretty much the same, but they are quite different. This one in particular entered early access towards the end of 2021, so it's been a few years at this point, and it's got a good few thousand reviews on Steam with 80 plus percent positive, so people are generally enjoying this one as well. Having said that, it was supposed to be in early access for up to one year, and it's approaching three years now, so there's no clear release window for Railroads Online, but just keep in mind that even though it's called Railroads Online, there is single player content as well. So if you're looking for train games, then this is one that you should check out. Alright, this next game is an exception in many ways, Derail Valley. This is a train game where you drive massive trains and build your career in a vast open railway network. And generally, I don't mention games that have been in early access for this long in these upcoming games lists, because after three to four years, you know, it's just going to be a perpetual early access game and I tend to not mention it anymore because they're not really new upcoming games, right, at that point. And this one has been in early access since the start of 2019, so it's been in early access for half a decade. Having said that, when I talked about train games in the past, people heavily asked for this one, so I'm just going to mention it here for you, and I can see why. It's got overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam, a good 5,000 user reviews at 95% positive. People really like it. They keep adding in more updates. There's a VR mode. It's a big open world experience, detailed vehicle simulation, a dynamic industry chain, career driven progression, customizable realism, accidents can happen, and there's just a lot here. And it's to be expected for a game that's been in early access for half a decade, so there should be a lot there. But it's not really a new game, is it? It might fully release someday, but I think what it is now is what you should expect if you're getting into it, and for those who have jumped in, they seem to be enjoying it. But yeah, it's been in early access for half a decade, so Derail Valley is not what I would normally list in these upcoming lists. For a more action-y train game, Trans-Siberian Railway Simulator. This is a game where you get behind the controls of a classic Russian locomotive, and you see if wild animals, bad people, strong frosts, and constantly breaking down is going to stop you. You are trying to survive on the longest railway line in the world, and there's actually a surprising amount of action here, including guns and shooting, so... This might not be just the train game that you're looking for, but it's got a lot surrounding the train, and people seem to be enjoying it. Now, I didn't go into early access, but they released a prologue because, as I mentioned earlier in the list, this is published by Playway. So they've released a prologue on Steam. And I do appreciate the prologue releases because you can leave reviews. And it's got a few hundred reviews at this point on Steam at 93% positive. So the prologue is being received quite well. And it's nice that we can see those reviews so we can know what we're getting into. And the prologue is free, so you can just try it. 
And there's a lot being promised here. A detailed simulation of driving the VL10 locomotive. There's a whole repair system, train traffic simulation. There's a survival and simulator game mode. The survival mode does have hunger, thirst, disease, hypothermia, and all of that stuff. There's dynamic weather. Mafia and police and there's just a lot to this game that's not about the train but it's all centered around the train so it's a train game. So you can go ahead and check out Trans-Siberian Railway Simulator the prologue right now and then we'll see how long it takes for a full game to be released. For a more economic approach to trains, Train Valley World. This is a transport tycoon inspired by the classics of this genre. And this seems to be a modern take. You build and manage efficient railroads across the globe, you create sophisticated logistical chains, and you can even design your own levels, all the while becoming a business mogul, solo, by yourself, or in multiplayer. Now, especially compared to the last game, this one might seem a little bit more cartoony, but don't underestimate the freedom you have here with the gameplay. It's supposed to be easy to learn, but challenging to master, which is a term that so many games use, but they are using it here. And you're meant to create a thriving transport empire during the peak of the Industrial Revolution. So you'll be optimizing railway networks, dispatching trains, setting up automated delivery routes, and really sinking your teeth into this rail world, which they say is specifically inspired by Railroad Tycoon 2 and Sid Meier's Railroads. The ability to create your own levels and play in multiplayer with friends is a nice addition, and in multiplayer, it is co-op or competitive. You could grow railway networks together or go about sabotaging and outwitting rival businesses. Generally speaking, Train Valley World does seem to be promising a lot, and if you are put off by the slightly more colorful cartoony visuals, maybe have a slightly closer look, which you can do because there's a free demo. So although Train Valley World is currently estimated to release sometime in 2024, the free demo is available right now at the time of recording, so you can jump in right now at least a little bit and see if it's something you want to be waiting for. Then we've got Railroad Corporation 2. Railroad electrification is the way forward in the new age of the train. You set a pace to prosperity, powered by your railroad business, by building routes across the region. You evolve a network of tracks and add locomotives to transport goods, and passengers, all the while trying to outpace the competition. Now, this is the kind of game you would expect from a train game list. It's about building up a train business empire, constructing bridges, tunnels, crossings, a network of tracks and locomotives, and you can even found cities and cultivate their growth over time by growing your business and then growing those cities in tandem. Building up industrial production facilities, hospitals, banks, and other structures as well. And then connect everything together by rail to fuel trade and supply your organization. Overall, Railroad Corporation 2 seems to be promising everything that you would expect and want from a train simulation tycoon kind of game. And, of course, this is a sequel to the original Railroad Corporation that released in 2019, which received mostly positive reviews. It wasn't like a mainstream huge hit or anything, but generally positive. So Railroad Corporation 2 is supposed to be taking that initial success and bringing it to another level. And we'll see if they can do it. Railroad Corporation 2 is set for a 2024 release window, but nothing particularly specific yet. Though they've been having some alpha demos and stuff to get some feedback and things like that. So it seems like this game is coming along, but we'll have to see what it is on release later on. Art of the Rail This is meant to be a spiritual remake of the classic Transport Tycoon games. You build a profitable transport network and grow your world's economy, either on your own in single player or in multiplayer, whether cooperatively or competitively. This is supposed to be Transport Tycoon, but new. And that is a very high bar to put yourself against because there's Open TTD, Open Transport Tycoon Deluxe, which is currently massively popular because the original Transport Tycoon has been expanded and improved over the past decades. So 
how are you supposed to make a new game that can live up to not just an old successful game, but an old successful game that is being continued by the community? So here they're promising a fully moddable game, good performance, built for multiplayer, the ability to create and share content with other players, and a detailed financial simulation. But I'm going to have to say that this one has been slow coming. This train has been chugging along at its own pace. Now it's from Rocketworks, which have had their ups and downs through the years. And this is supposed to be an early access game, which I have to say very weirdly on the Steam page, under the what the developers have to say, it's left a blank. And also the last update for this game was six months ago in terms of any kind of news, at the time of recording anyway. So I don't usually consider a game abandoned until there's no news for a year. So Art of the Rail may get an update and may be released at some point in the future, but at the moment there's like a 50-50 chance that it's, it's just not gonna happen. But I thought since it's only been six months since the last update, I'm not considering it fully abandoned. So we might hear more about Art of the Rail over the next year. But if not, then it's going to be off my lists in the future. Driving to one that's already in early access, Sweet Transit. Now, Sweet Transit released into early access around the middle of 2022 on Steam and it got generally positive reviews, slightly mixed, but I just really love the look of Sweet Transit. It's got that look that really fits my personal aesthetic. So I love the way Sweet Transit looks and it's got a lot of good things to it, but it seems to be kind of a hit and miss with the people who play it. Now, this is calling itself a kind of a city builder where railway is king and trains are the best means of transportation. Quaint villages will expand to bustling cities, farms to industrious factories, and steam-powered rail to combustious diesel in an interconnected train-driven world. So it does sound kind of like Transport Tycoon as well, but meant to have maybe a bit more focus on the city building aspect. It also does have mod support, and the customizable railway networks seems to be quite good. But I think in its initial launch and over the past couple years, people have been sort of criticizing the UI somewhat, the tutorial has some issues. Generally, it's unrefined, so the idea is good. But I think in a subgenre where there's so much competition, I mean, look at all the train games we have here today. And this is just upcoming games in 2024 that are still in development, not counting the many, many train games that are already released and popular. I think the standards are just really, really high. So Sweet Transit is hitting kind of a 70 plus percent positive rating on Steam right now. And I think you need to have a closer look to see whether it's really what you want. Having said that, the full release of Sweet Transit was supposed to be around the middle of 2023. So we are into 2024 now, so it's past its due date likely because of the lack of refinement that people are complaining about. But you know, it might be in a state where you will enjoy it, but just be a bit cautious before jumping into Sweet Transit. Then for those of you who like the top-down traffic simulation kind of games, Iron Roads. This is of course a train game where you lay tracks, buy trains, set their routes, you fix jams, optimize your network, and you repeat because that's what you want to do in these games. Specifically, obviously, this one is a top-down one, so it sort of feels like mini motorways or all those other kinds of traffic simulation top-down kind of games, and those can be very popular sometimes. Some of those really, really explode, and this one is just all about the trains, and it could be something quite special, maybe. It being a minimalistic kind of game, visually and interface-wise, and very focused gameplay. I mean, it even says Iron Roads will not have buses, boats, planes, or any other forms of transport. It is just trains. 2D trains all the way. And if that's what you want, then Iron Roads is for you. If you're not too sure, another good news, there's a free demo at the time of recording, so you can just try Iron Roads right now, and then you'll know if you want to see the full version later on sometime in 2024, which is when Iron Roads is meant to be releasing. Now for an upcoming simulator game that I probably should mention, 
Train Mechanic Simulator 2024. Now these simulator games always seem to be so varied in terms of their reception. Some hit so hard and become some of the biggest games in the world, and sometimes they just fall flat and become very, very unpopular. So it's always hard to tell whether an upcoming simulator game is going to be a big hit or not. This one also is being published by Playway, and Playway tend to have some mega hits and some not so mega hits. And generally, you can see the trailer and it can look cool, but it's never really fully representative of what the final game is going to be. So Train Mechanic Simulator 2024 could be something really, really big, or it could not. I thought I'd just point to it and not necessarily promise anything. They have their own promises in terms of managing and stocking your workshop, maintaining and repairing these trains, having over 3,000 unique parts. It's supposed to have a high level of detail with fluids and pressure washing and painting and engine maintenance and all of that stuff. But until the game releases and we actually see exactly what it is, we don't really know what Train Mechanic Simulator is going to be. Could be something, could be not. Thought I'd point to it, and it's supposed to release sometime in 2024, so there you go. Next, we've got a train game that has just recently entered early access to overwhelmingly positive reviews, Railroader. You and your fellow railroaders are the lifeblood of your railroad just like the trains are the lifeblood of the community they serve. This game is all about keeping the trains running. You switch cars at industries, you keep people moving while running the local passenger trains, and you run trains with a purpose. You're delivering freight cars to customers and moving passengers to their destinations. And every car that you deliver will move you closer to your goals, whether it's buying more powerful locomotives, fancier passenger cars or expanding your main line or upgrading your railroad. You can do what you want in this game. It's your railroad. The more you do, the more you grow. At first glance, this looks like another sort of typical train sim kind of game, but the reception has been very, very positive. At 98% positive, with over a thousand user reviews after just a couple months in early access on Steam, Railroader is speeding ahead. Their estimate was to stay in early access for about a year, so it's looking at a full release towards the end of 2024, which of course, games planned to release towards the end of the year can very easily be delayed until the next year, even if it's until January or February, it quite often happens. So you can expect Railroader to release maybe 2025. Right now, it seems like people are absolutely loving it. It's in early access. And really, it seems to be delivering on all of its promises so far. So I think you can hop on Railroader if you like these kind of train games. And it's already a success, so if they just keep doing what they're doing, then it's just going to keep growing and growing from here. And then finally, I do want to mention this one, which it is said to be releasing quarter 1 2025, so it's slightly past this year. It's called Times of Progress. It looks like another kind of quaint and very pleasant approach to the Transport Tycoon formula, as it's kind of a city builder set during the Industrial Revolution, and you build industries to extract natural resources, and you produce goods to satisfy the population, managing transportation routes by train and by ship on procedurally generated maps with cities scattered around. So it is very much kind of a Transport Tycoon kind of approach, but looking at it, it just seems so pleasant, and it seems to be promising all of the train logistical simulation that you would want, especially with the growing cities, that's always a nice touch. It's a feature that's proven to be popular, and it's meant to have this trading mechanic with AI-controlled cities and randomized goals and rewards, and generally high replayability. It's a new take on a classic formula, and it just seems like something that you would be interested in if you're watching this list. Times of Progress is planning for a quarter one 2025 release. We may get a demo or maybe a kind of a taste of it through 2024, but for now it's just something to watch. But I thought I should tell you about it because it does look like it's got a lot of promise to it. Hopefully it does live up to that promise. All right, driving away from all the train games, this next set of simulation games are life sims. 
games like The Sims and Stardew Valley. Beginning with Moonlight Peaks. Here you experience life as a vampire, and you master the art of potion making and spell casting, and you tend to your supernatural farm, and you make your mark on the magical town, befriending the local werewolves, witches, and mermaids, and even finding eternal love along the way. Generally, it seems like a vampire fantasy Stardew Valley, which I guess a lot of people would be into, actually. And it's got what you would expect, including farming and harvesting, finding a partner, and just building your vampire dream home. And of course, there's fishing. There's fishing. <laughs> How can you have a life sim without fishing these days? But you can also practice your bartending skills or using your shapeshifting to explore hidden areas of Moonlight Peaks. It seems like a quirky fun time, but we haven't seen all that much at this point, and there's no specific release window. Moonlight Peaks is one that you might want to skulk about watching from the shadows for a little bit, and then we'll see how it turns out later on. And then there's a game that a lot of people are calling kind of a realistic competitor to The Sims. It's called Inzoi, and a trailer was released recently, and it does look really nice. It's very realistic looking, graphically anyway and it does seem to have all the life sim tropes that you would want. But also, this is one trailer that we've seen and we haven't seen much else. There's no Steam page for it yet or anything like that. So this might be something that is very, very promising moving forward. But we also have a lot of competitors to The Sims that are being developed as well. Paradox has one that's coming up in a little bit in this video, and also there's Paralives, which is set for a 2025 release, and The Sims 5 is also in development, but we don't know if we're getting that anytime soon. So anyway, so far this Inzoi trailer does look very cool, very promising. I don't know how much it would compete with The Sims because they tend to like the quirky, funny, cartoony approach, and this seems like the more realistic, actually very realistic approach to a life sim, but there's gonna be overlap of course, and we'll see how this one does turn out, because the trailer looks good, but we'll see how the actual game is when it's, uh, we've seen more and we get our hands on it, whenever that will be. Now I've mentioned Stardew Valley, how about Sunkissed City? This is a life sim set in an upbeat, sun-kissed seaside metropolis full of funky vibes and quirky characters. You stake out your new life in the city, tending to DIY gardens, learning new skills, and making lifelong friends to help bring back life to the city's once vibrant streets. Now, at first glance, you might be thinking, this looks exactly like Stardew Valley. And it's because it's from a developer, an ex-developer, of Stardew Valley. And if you're worried about this game ripping off anything, well, this developer does actually have permission to do this from the creator of Stardew Valley. So it's all above board and it does seem to bring a lot of different and original approaches to the game. It's not just Stardew Valley. It's sort of like the opposite of Stardew Valley, really. Stardew Valley, you come from the city and you move out to the farm. This one, you're moving to the city, I guess. So I mean, this could just be very much like Stardew Valley, but slightly different, which honestly a lot of people would like. It's sort of like a very extensive overhaul mod to Stardew Valley, and people will play that and enjoy it fine. But this might also turn out to be something very, very different from Stardew Valley, in which case, great, we've got something very different to play. It could go either way, but Sunkiss City is scheduled for a quarter four 2024 release, so if they stick to the schedule, then it'll be releasing later this year. But it might, of course, be delayed into 2025. We'll see whether Sunkissed City will arrive on time. Then, for one that is much anticipated, Haunted Chocolatier. This is the next game from Eric Barone, also known as Concerned Ape the creator of Stardew Valley. After the massive success of Stardew Valley, they're moving on to a chocolate-making life sim. Now, the thing about Haunted Chocolatier is that we have had a reveal trailer, but that was a couple years ago at this point, and we don't really know too many details. The odd update, the odd screenshot, in Eric's own words, he just likes to work in secret, so we really don't know much about it. If it is anything like Stardew Valley, 
and in Stardew Valley fashion continues to get updates and improvements over the years, Haunted Chocolatier could just be a fantastic alternative or continuation to the Stardew Valley experience. And I think anyone who's been into any kind of farming sim would also be into Haunted Chocolatier. But really, there isn't too much to say at this point. You know, even if there has been anything said already, it's not necessarily gonna still be true by the time this game releases. It should be mentioned that a major update for Stardew Valley is on the way, and I have to expect after that update launches, the focus will be on Haunted Chocolatier. But we'll see how that goes. And then we have Critter Cove, cozy scrapyard life sim. This one is also set on an island. Here we rebuild an island town alongside a quirky cast of critters in this open world cozy life sim. Explore a vibrant and mysterious archipelago, build a thriving community, and make new friends all in a colorful, handcrafted, post-post-apocalypse world. So I suppose the apocalypse has happened, and now it is after the apocalypse when everything's nice again? Your new life in this cozy island paradise awaits. So in this game, you find yourself in a neglected town where you get to develop and rebuild it to become your own thriving island community. You salvage trash and craft items, furniture, clothes, and more, and you rescue and recruit new critters to live and work in your town. This one also has underwater elements where you get to craft your scuba gear and dive into an underwater world. And of course, you can personalize your home, the whole town, and your wardrobe as you build stores, amenities, and even tourist attractions. This one does just look really lovely, and it is planning to release quarter one in 2024 into early access. So they are planning to release fully a 1.0 version of the game sometime in 2024, but no specific release date has been set. Though it will be playable sometime early in the year, and although of course an early access game could easily be delayed into 2025, I think Critter Cove, the cozy scrapyard life sim, will be mostly playable through 2024. And from what we've seen so far, it looks really pleasant. And also, maybe trend alert, islands and underwater stuff in life sims? It seems like a popular theme to go for. But let's see how many games on this list actually follow this latest trend. And then for a cozy game with just a wonderful art style. It's called The Garden Path, a slice of life sim about the joy of gardening, designed to be picked up and played in short and sweet bites. Whether you're fishing, growing, trading, or making new vegetable friends, a wonderful and wistful adventure awaits when wandering the garden path. It's interesting that a selling point for this game is to be played in short bursts, considering many life sims are played for endless hours and easily thousands of hours overall. So it's nice to have an option where you don't have to commit your entire life to it and it's by design not going to be a complete obsession. And a big focus on gardening, not farming, is here, which is also different, even if only in a subtle way. You find plants to cultivate, to whistle, to charm song fish in a unique fishing minigame, you trade what you harvest, and you take part in events across the passing days. All while you piece together a whimsical story as you discover the secrets of the garden. Now, the main selling point here, I think, is the art style. It just looks phenomenally cozy and relaxing and beautiful all around. And nothing else really on this list looks like this. It just, it looks like a modern storybook, and I just love the way it looks. And just personally, I'm gonna keep an eye on The Garden Path. I Am Future, Cozy Apocalypse Survival. This is a game which is a relaxing survival game about building a cozy rooftop camp amid a flooded post-apocalyptic city. You set up a farm, cook delicious food, dismantle tools for crafting resources, automate chores by recruiting cute robots, and uncover the mystery behind the catastrophe. You just build your little slice of life paradise up on a rooftop as the rest of the world has gone to ruin. 
Now, it doesn't really sound like you could turn an abandoned roof into any kind of cozy home, but that's what this game is about. You craft gadgets out of ancient home appliances, you upload AI into buildings and create robots that help you with your work, and there's fishing, farming, and cooking, because of course there is. Now, you do have to protect your base a little bit in this post-apocalyptic world. There's mutated life forms, which can cause some problems, but I'm sure you'll figure it out. And after you've protected your home, you get to explore the sunken city and its mysteries to find out what happened with the civilization that used to be there, and maybe get to the bottom of what caused the end of the world. Now, this is another game that is in early access, but just recently, in the second half of 2023, and so far it's been received very positively. They do say they don't want to be in early access for too long, but you know how these things go. Sometimes it's best if games just take their time. So I do expect I Am Future Cozy Apocalypse Survival to continue in early access into 2024, but uh, it should fully release not too long from now if they manage to stick to their word. Going full on into farming, it's The Ranchers, an open world country life sim for one to four players you raise animals, grow crops, craft machines, build your dream house, and explore the gigantic open world where mines and dangerous monsters exist. You earn the villagers' respect and esteem, and who knows, maybe you find love and start a family. So this game is all about creating your ranch. You know, raising animals, growing crops, reclaiming resources, buying new plots of land, and all of that. You develop your ranch by crafting objects, machines, and processing resources for profit. There's ranch management, online cooperation so you can invite one to three players to join you. There's an auction market, a trade guild, a massive open world which you can explore on foot, horseback, scooter, pickup, yacht, including mines with ultra rare minerals, gems, and all of that. You can improve your character's skills, build the house of your dreams. But having said that, the game is said to be constantly in evolution, so things could change as time goes on. But also, I think one of the key things about the ranchers is, although there is this pleasant overworld, just looking at the trailer, things get pretty deep in the mines, to the point where you might be fighting some unexpectedly harsh creatures. So overall, The Ranchers looks like a very interesting idea. Could be a cool one to get into with your friends. And as of right now, it's just set for a 2024 release. So if you like the look of The Ranchers and like the farming approach with a bit of a twist as you go deeper into the game, then The Ranchers might be something that you want to keep your eye on. Going back to the water, we've got Haven Dock. Breathe easy and thrive in this cozy colony sim. Build a haven for castaways, manage resources, and live your best life on the ocean. In this game where you lead your humble settlement into a high-tech society. So this is a kind of a resource management game where you try to survive in the middle of the sea and build a thriving town. You attract settlers on board and you manage them while trying to meet their needs. Early on, you start a farm and cook meals. You manage other castaways that show up on your haven dock. You become an inventor, creating machines to improve people's lives. Eventually, you head out from your haven dock to discover new lands. And although this is primarily a single-player game, there is an experimental multiplayer mode. But the developers straight up said that you'll encounter a spectacular number of bugs, as this is a work in progress. Having said that, Haven Dock is in early access. It's not feature complete, but they do plan to leave early access in 2024. But until then, if you're unsure about Haven Dock, there is a free demo right now on Steam. So you can go have a closer look at Haven Dock with no risk and see if it's the kind of cozy life sim for you. To be a bit more cute and quaint, we have Everhome. In this game, you play Lily, who is spirited away to a mysterious island. As her memories fade, everyone seems to know her and her quest for her missing sister. It's time to establish a homestead, 
Meet your family of Everfolks, then learn their secrets and solve the mystery of Everhome in this open-ended, minimalist RPG life sim. Taking some cues from Studio Ghibli, you are actually spirited away through a portal and you begin to lose who you are as you become part of Everhome. And this new world isn't all sunshine and flowers. The island has many secrets which need to be pried open by force or finesse, and you'll be delving into procedurally generated dungeons to fight monsters that lurk underground. But while you're overground, things are nice and pleasant. There's farming, there's shops, and just a, re a really quaint, nice, lovely village. But as it says, not all is as it seems. This one does just look really nice. And I think by looking at the gameplay, you can tell whether this game is for you. So if you're interested in Everhome, the release date is set for sometime in 2024, so you can keep an eye on this until then. Next up, we've got a new leaf, Memories. You wake up on the beach of a foreign land, unable to recall anything, so we've forgotten ourselves again. <laughs> Alone and equipped with only the basic farming tools provided by the town residents, you aim to recover your memories, complete quests, and explore Omoid Island to unfold your story. As you can see, the trend does continue. We've got another island, and memory loss in a new world might also be part of the trend. In this game, you manage your dream farm. A plot of land is given to you by the mayor, and you get to transform and manage the terrain as you see fit. There's cooking, and mining, and fishing, because those are a necessity in this genre. And of course, relationships with all the other villagers. Quests that you can go on. This one does specifically have a big focus on pets and animals, dogs and cats, along with all your farm animals, which all require feeding, grooming, cleaning, and of course, plenty of petting. Customization is a big point. Your character and your home. So decoration and outfits abound. Also, this game is being published by Crytivo, which don't always stick to their schedules. So I'm gonna expect this to have a good chance of being delayed. But also, this game was kickstarted a couple years ago, so what's a few more months into the new year? Anyway, A New Leaf Memories does look pretty charming, and if you're interested, you can keep an eye on it until it has some kind of release, hopefully sometime in the near future. For one with a long title, this one's called Meat Light and the Secrets of the Universe. Meat Light is an indie game with crafting, farming, building, and a unique spiritual story. Run your forge, take care of your farm, and trade with the villagers, then you get to explore the energetic worlds and meet their inhabitants. This one is promising a skill system for your character, forging for crafting of tools and machines, farming, of course, cooking, extraction of raw materials, trading, a quality system for stuff you make and grow, quests to go on, an open world to explore, building of your house, and customization of your character. Seasons, weather, and growing trees are all part of this as well. Now, at the moment, we don't know too much about this game. I mean, the trailer does show a good amount, but it's hard to tell how this game will actually play at this moment. It is supposed to release sometime in quarter one of 2024, which hopefully is when we'll see more, and then we'll be able to properly judge Meat Light then. Congratulations, you've bought your own planet in Farlands, an agrarian rock in the edge of the galaxy which, for some reason, was almost given away for free. So the time has come for you to leave the hectic and stressful life of the overcrowded metropolis for a more rural and rewarding life on an entirely different planet. Ah, I think many of us do just want to leave to another planet. In this game, you'll be restoring the planet, cutting weeds, clearing paths, reclaiming fields, and fixing what the passing of time has destroyed, turning an old agrarian rock into a thriving homestead. Meanwhile, you get to explore the solar system. Even though your ship is a little banged up, you'll be able to move between the planets, collecting resources and using them to help improve your farm, your tools, and your ship. There is a local community for you to get to know, but also, why was this planet so cheap? Something must be wrong. Generally speaking, this looks like a space Stardew Valley, and you know, honestly, 
I'm not mad about that. Sometimes we just need a change of scenery for our favorite thing. So perhaps Farland is gonna scratch that itch for many of you. Set for a release in quarter one of 2024, you'll be able to buy your own planet not too long from now. Sticking to the pixels, it's Pixelshire. Build the town of Pixelshire and grow your community in this sandbox game which mixes life sim elements with town building, exploration and combat. Express yourself by planning the town to your liking, master trades, get to know your neighbors and explore the continent of Arcadia. The unique thing here is you don't just build up your farm or your home, you're building the whole town, how you see fit, including terraforming so you can carve and craft the landscape and decorate pretty much everything. Your town will grow with each citizen you encounter along the way and each villager has their own house that you must place and design. Of course, there's farming, planting, and crops with livestock, mining, woodcutting, fishing, cooking, brewing, and all that good stuff. After which you can explore a continent of land. And you can not just befriend the other townsfolk, many of them have unique skills which can assist you in your quests and adventures, so they can tag along as you head out into the world, which I think is a nice touch. So again, of course, it has to be said, this game is clearly influenced by Stardew Valley, but it brings its own twists and variety to the table, which I think is nice. So like the last game, maybe just a change of scenery is nice. So at the moment, Pixel Shire is set for a 2023 release at some point, but into early access. So even if it does release by the end of 2023, it will continue development into 2024. And, you know, as things go, most likely longer than that. But we'll see how it goes in Pixel Shire. Okay, for one last game that was clearly inspired by Stardew Valley, Super Zoo Story. You build and manage your own personal zoo in the Pixel Marvel RPG Super Zoo Story. You construct your park, care for your animals, and ensure the happiness of both critters and humans alike. Maybe you even find that special someone while building the zoo of your dreams. So this is a life sim where you're building up a zoo. So kind of imagine Stardew Valley plus Zoo Tycoon, which I think is a pretty cool idea because you get to collect a variety of animals over 70 different types and you have to take care of them and there are even dinosaurs where you get to develop new dinosaur species by combining DNA and you get that dino DNA by exploring caves and of course there are relationships that you can build with all the local people and all of that. So this game had a little bit of a controversy earlier on with its art style, which was not just inspired by Stardew Valley, it was it pretty much looked like Stardew Valley, even though the premise was slightly different with the zoo. And even in the footage you're seeing right now, it probably looks very much like Stardew Valley. Although it is important to say that there was no copyright infringement or straight up plagiarism, the art assets were different. And to their benefit, since the criticism of the art style being too similar, there have been works to change the art to look more unique, to look more individual, and just generally different from Stardew Valley. I personally think it was pretty much fine before because, you know, Stardew Valley is already a massively successful game. It's hard to take away from that. But I also do appreciate Super Zoo Story taking on that criticism and doing something with it because I actually think the new art they're showing off looks really nice. So of course, as time moves on, more of the art is replaced and improved. So you can go check out how they're changing the art and you can see that it is becoming more of its own style, which is nice to see. There's no set release date for Super Zoo Story so no idea when it's gonna release. It's got an interesting premise, so if they just deliver on all of this stuff, then I think it could be a really cool game to get into. Okay, now for games that are all competing with The Sims, beginning with Tiny Life. In this game, you control a set of people that live together in a household. Sounds familiar. You take care of their daily needs, build their skills, forge new relationships, or just mess up their entire life in whatever way you can think of. The interesting thing about Tiny Life is that it's sort of a Sims 1 D make. It's like a Sims 0 or Sims 0 0.5, where it's like 8-bit pixel art, but it's kind of like the Sims 1-ish. Kind of. 
Anyway, this game is pretty much like a Sims game. You build houses, set up your character, wear clothes, control the household, there's skills, and all of that good stuff, including mods and Steam Workshop integration, which is a very nice addition. The game is in early access since about the middle of 2023 with few but very positive reviews, and the good news is that there is a free demo as well. So if you're unsure about this even more retro Sims kind of game, then you can try it out for free and see if it's for you before jumping in all the way. But I think for this section, the main thing that people are looking for is basically The Sims without EA to see if there's any good alternatives. So let's move on to the next option. This one is called Viva Land. All the world's a stage and all the people are merely players, especially in Viva Land where you can become the director of your own story. You design characters, craft stories, build a house, and if you want, you can invite up to seven of your friends to join you in creating and playing together. So basically, this is The Sims with multiplayer? I mean, online co-op in this kind of game is, well, it's sort of like a smaller scale second life, I guess, but just for a small group of friends. Up to eight players is quite a few, actually. And you'll be creating your characters, experiencing life, building your dream houses and worlds, and improving your skills as you make your way from a toddler to adult, doing things like painting, writing, gardening, cooking, playing instruments, repairing objects, and more. So this one, of course, is a more modern interpretation of this kind of dollhouse sim. But the main challenge for these games trying to take on modern sims is that despite all the other issues and problems of the sims franchise, generally there's one thing that the sims always nails, which is personality and whimsy. It's always the most characterful, which is something that any game that's tried to take on Maxis games in general has struggled with, even if they've become their own bigger successes in their own right. You know, sort of like comparing City Skylines to SimCity 5, which is the SimCity 2013 game. Although City Skylines clearly was the winner, many do still prefer the whimsy of SimCity. Anyway, in Viva Land, it does look like there's a lot of promise here, but we haven't really seen all that much in terms of how this is gonna play out but they are setting it for a 2024 release at the moment and maybe the small multiplayer aspect is enough to set this apart i mean i know a lot of people who would love to just have a friend or two in their sims world and maybe that's all it'll take for viva land to blow up i guess we'll have to wait and see now, going in the opposite direction of indie, it's Life by You. This is the Sims competitor from Paradox. So there's a lot of money behind this, and Paradox has been swinging that City Skylines money into other simulation games recently, and Life by You is taking on the Sims franchise. Designed to be one of the most moddable and open life simulation games, this one is about humans, stories, and creations that you will make. You play in an open world with no loading screens, you strike up real language conversations, you can drive or bike to the countryside, and you discover and complete quests to unlock new new experiences. Modding is going to be a big thing with creator tools included and you can change the gameplay anytime. You can also take direct control of your humans, like driving them around in third person mode as you climb a career ladder, fall in love and raise a family, all while telling stories through conversations and designing your own world. So this is a paradox game. So first thing, you can expect a lot of DLC and it's already got a release date, at least an early access release date at the moment set for the 5th of March 2024. And it's meant to be an early access for at least 12 months. So this is an early access release in 2024 with a full release currently set for some time in 2025, but of course it could go longer. And as I was mentioning earlier about the comparison between SimCity and City Skylines, you can see how Life by You 
is one of those paradox games where it's taking that Sims kind of approach, but in a more developed, more elaborate way, but also lacking that whimsy. So just on, you know, like a basic point, this game actually just calls your characters humans. They're not Sims, or they're not like in Viva Land where they're called Vivas, they're just called humans. And that's kind of the approach that I suppose has worked for Paradox. And they're gonna try recreate that again with Life by You. City Skylines killed Sim City. Could Life by You kill the Sims? Maybe not quite as easy a task. It's most likely going to cut in before any kind of Sims 5 release, which could give them the edge up. As The Sims 5 announces new features, Life by You could just add them in before Sims 5 even releases. So if you are waiting for Sims 5, maybe you don't really have to wait for it and you could just get into Life by You first. We'll see if this is actually a good game when it does release into Early Access. And then for a big subgenre of simulation games, there's city building games. So there's all kinds of city builders out there and we have a whole bunch that are just coming this year. Some big ones, some small ones, futuristic ones, medieval ones, fantasy ones, all kinds. So the next set of games on this list are the city builders. Now, if you liked the settlers but hate the new settlers game, well, good news. Pioneers of Pagonia. This is actually from the developers of the original settlers but they've just gone ahead and made their own game called Pioneers of Pagonia. This is all about exploration, discovery, and reuniting the fantastical islands of Pagonia, and you'll be able to build over 40 different buildings and use 70 different types of goods, managing widely branched production chains, and you can get creative when it comes to your economy. Impressively, this game is promising the ability to have thousands of inhabitants, procedurally generated maps, you protect your population from hostile animals, plundering bandits and mythical creatures, and you'll have to unite with scattered tribes. So basically, it sounds like the old school settlers, but modern. And if you are concerned about how this is going, don't worry, it went into early access in December 2023, right at the end of the year, to very positive reviews. We're looking at mid 80% positive, and they've got a whole roadmap and development updates coming for the economy, mining, a co-op update where you can team up with your friends, and various quality of life stuff is also on the way. So it's in early access now. It's hit the ground running. Everyone seems to be pretty much on board with it. And if it just gets better through the year, then Pioneers of Pagonia should be turning into something quite special. They are aiming for at least six months in early access. They of course might take longer, but 2024 is the plan for a full release for Pioneers of Pagonia. Flying in beyond these stars. Build a city on the back of a space whale and learn to coexist as you journey through the stars. Manage intricate supply chains and the needs of your people as you build outposts, meet aliens, and uncover the mysteries of the universe. Now, building on the backs of giant animals is a bit of a trend for city builders right now, and some of them are pretty interesting. In this one, you have a home among the stars. You will be building a sprawling city, but you're on a universe-traveling space whale as your people seek places to live and work. You'll be reaching far and wide as you terraform the land around you to better suit your needs, and you'll create a thriving ecosystem by digging canals and adding topsoil in preparation for farming and planting trees to maintain a steady flow of raw materials. So this is a bit like City Builder, but also restoring the natural environment, which sort of has some Timberborn vibes, or maybe Terra Nil. And as you progress through the technologies and gaining access to more advanced goods, you'll need to set up logistical networks and mining infrastructure. But if you go too far, then maybe your space whale won't be too happy about it. So overall, this one is looking pretty promising. And it's pretty much a sequel to the previous city building game called Before We Leave. So I suppose Beyond These Stars is essentially after we leave. <laughs> but yeah, it looks pretty interesting and seems to have a lot of promise. And if they're just improving from the last game, then this should be pretty good. Right now, it's just set for a 2024 release window, but nothing specific yet. 
For a swashbuckling builder, Republic of Pirates. Establish and grow a pirate utopia during the golden age of piracy. You create a resource-based economy, engage in real-time naval combat, and navigate diplomatic relations with rival powers, all the while exploring the far reaches of the Caribbean in search of the ultimate fortune and glory. So with a bit of Anno vibes, this one is a city builder plus a ship naval combat thing with apparently a secret treasure, and you'll be utilizing over a hundred unique buildings to provide resources and infrastructure required to grow your burgeoning republic. The battles themselves are where you command a fleet of ships and you'll explore the archipelago and conquer new territories. And on the topic of diplomacy, you will be harboring rivalries or maybe even forging alliances. Now, through this game, there will be missions for you to complete. You'll be receiving orders to attack settlements or collect bounties, striking up trade deals. But you get to choose how you want to play this game. There's supposed to be flexible gameplay modes with free play or configurable settings or new maps where you can pick and choose what kind of game you want to play. So maybe you just want the building aspect or you want more of the naval combat stuff then this all sort of can be up to you. Maybe a competitor for the Anno series, but we'll see if they can actually bring it up to snuff, yeah? Because it's right now just set for a 2024 release window, and we'll see through the year if they can actually set sail. And then one that looked quite promising, New Cycle. This is a city building game with the focus on survival. An apocalyptic series of solar flares has pretty much destroyed the world and human society has been thrown into disarray. It's up to you to establish a new settlement and develop it all the way from humble beginnings to industrial metropolis. Now you get to sculpt your settlement how you like using a free form or grid based design because I know that's always a contention for a lot of people. Some people really love grids, some people really love curved roads. Well this game can do both. But you'll be doing it in an uncaring world with sandstorms, shortages, wildfire and natural disasters. Don't forget refugee crises, unrest, disease outbreaks and just generally everything is trying to kill you. So you will have to lead your people distributing food, water, tools and clothes to make sure that they can survive and be productive members of this post-apocalyptic society. And over time, complex production chains should form and research and progress will lead you back to modern day. Well, that's if you can survive long enough anyway. You will also have to explore the world and story and lore will unfold as you go along. Now, this game just released into early access at the time of recording and it's received mostly positive reviews, 75 plus percent positive, and that's pretty good for the very start of early access. Having said that, they are planning to be in early access for one to two years. So it's a 2024 game for now, but full release will likely be in 2025 or maybe even 2026 if things take longer. Not really longer than expected, they are kind of planning up to two years in early access. We're looking at full release later on down the line, but you can play New Cycle right now. And then for another genre mix, Kaiser Punk. This game is very interesting because it seems to be combining city building and grand strategy well they're trying to make it seamlessly and that seems to be the trend with a lot of grand strategies these days where it's trying to mix in other genres particularly rts or city building and in kaiser punk you're supposed to build and conquer in an alternative 20th century world you engage in battle on land sea and air and you use your economic power to emerge as the ultimate victor so you'll be shaping your own city state from the ground up where every street factory and skyline is up to you. You unlock new buildings and building upgrades, you build on ground and on water, and new tech is unlocked depending on how you build your city. On the grand strategy side, there's over a hundred regions to be conquered and exploited. Each region comes with its own bonuses and penalties, so you gotta choose where you wanna go. And you'll be assembling your armies to take on the rival factions of the world on land, sea and air. There's also production chains and logistics, where there's over a hundred various resources to mine, farm, refine and manufacture, and you have to get things around. 
with transportation networks and trade. Overall, it's a game of choices. You're going to be choosing things at every step of the way. And if you make the wrong choices, you may be stripped of your power. I mean, personally, this seems very, very promising. It looks really nice to look at, actually. As a City Builder fan, this might be the in point for getting into grand strategies and just scaling up that gameplay. But you know, it really comes down to how it's all executed. And right now, Kaiserpunk is just looking at a 2024 release at some point. Nothing specific yet, but I am personally very curious of what Kaiserpunk is going to be at the end of the day. Pax Augusta. This really seems to be a project of passion, and it seems to have a lot of promise. In this game, you be a part of important decisions within the Roman Empire. You build up a prospering city, you take care of your citizens, trade goods or earn money to build impressive monuments and hire advisors. Secure your city, increase your power to become the Senate, and maybe even the next Emperor. Generally speaking, this game looks really good so far. A lot of buildings have been recreated one-to-one -to, -one to how they historically looked. It's promising a sandbox mode, a story mode developed by a historian. There's defense and military with towers and gates. You will be fighting fire, crime, and population uprisings. There are also barbarians to deal with, legions to manage. Huge maps are being promised from Britannia to Dacia, and so much more. Visually speaking, it does look pretty decent, maybe a bit grim and dark, which does sort of feel a little bit early 2000s, but you know, it seems to be coming along quite well. So for Roman city builders, this one is definitely one to watch, and at the moment it's just set to release sometime in 2024, so we will see how Pax Augusta comes together. Then for a really cool looking one that I've been watching for a couple years, Earth of Orin. This is an indie city builder strategy game set in a medieval world, which is filled with story and heart. And I have to say, it looks gorgeous. Starting from nothing, you shape your kingdom according to your vision while managing the needs and wants of your people. Now, this is a low poly art style, but they've done something with it that just looks very unique. Nothing else really kind of looks like this. And I have to say, I love the way it looks. You'll be building great cities and mighty castles and bustling towns as you set laws and moral systems to guide your people. You raise and manage armies to protect your kingdom. You manage the economy, gather resources and trade with other civilizations and research new technologies. As you explore these untouched lands, discovering creatures, biomes and those other civilizations. Now, when it comes to building, you could design your own buildings from the ground up or using a prefab system to just get things going. And building gets even more complex with powered buildings, with moving parts like bridges and even elevators, which is going to come in handy when you have to master water and the flow of water. So there really is a lot to this. It looks great. It seems to have a ton of detail visually and gameplay wise. There's these large procedural worlds, there's strategy and military, there is a creative mode so you can just build whatever you want in a sandbox, there's weather and day night cycles, exploration and everything. I mean there just seems to be so much here. So right now there isn't any particular release window for Earth of Orin, but it is definitely one to watch because it just seems so interesting. Hopefully they'll be able to pull it off, otherwise we'll get some nice screenshots at least. Going all fantasy, Fable Dumb. Once upon a village. This is set in a wholesome fairy tale world and is supposed to be an idealistic, laid back city builder. You'll enjoy the growth of your settlement, trade, and use diplomacy to ally or challenge your neighbors, and most importantly, find yourself a prince or princess and live happily ever after. You know, with all the stressful survival, post-apocalyptic, hostile city builders out there, sometimes, you know, maybe a chill, pleasant one is something you'd want on the table, and this is supposed to be that. You'll be collecting resources and shaping your settlement in a flourishing land, and there'll be tales of trade, feuds, and partnerships. 
you'll find a spouse. And although it is a chill, relaxing city builder, you will still build an army and elect a hero to protect and conquer, but you know, it's all very cute. They say they're inspired by the settlers, foundation and kingdoms and castles, and you can see that quite easily. Now this has been an early access since about the middle of 2023 on Steam. Two very positive reviews, just under 90% positive, and I do know user reviews aren't the be all and end all of how good or bad a game is, but it's an indicator. And they are planning for about one year in early access, so that means that the goal for release is supposed to be April in 2024, though of course with early access games it can take longer, but if they're anywhere close to hitting their goal, this should fully release in 2024, but if you like the look of it right now, then you can just have a closer look and jump into Fabledom. Next up, Terrascape. Staying in the more chill vibes, this is supposed to be a cozy city puzzler, where you build gorgeous kingdoms by placing buildings strategically on idyllic floating islands. You discover secret combinations, explore randomly generated maps, and there's even multiplayer game modes. Overall, this seems like a city builder that's pretty much inspired by Dorf Romantic. Dorf Romantic was a puzzler tile placer slash builder thing where it was mostly about relaxing and placing things for adjacency bonuses. This one seems a bit more on the city builder side, but it's still a city builder puzzle-ish kind of combination. And the addition of multiplayer matches where you can compete with friends is kind of a odd but maybe cool addition. It does look nice, but obviously not for everyone. But if you liked Dorf Romantic, then this might be a twist that will appeal to you. This one has also been in early access since about the middle of 2023 to also very positive user reviews, just under 90%. And they are also aiming for about a year in early access. So this should be a 2024 full release unless Terrascape gets delayed. We've got Siege of Eirdor, a city builder strategy game set in dark medieval times, which has a lot of defensive building and surviving versus waves of enemies. So sort of like a village builder plus stronghold kind of thing. Although it's medieval, it is a fantasy as there's an army of darkness coming to kill you. So you'll be building up your fortress, gathering and producing resources, managing your people and training an army, and you survive night sieges in a real-time with active pause combat system. As you survive, you'll be discovering the story of shadows. There are a number of random events you're gonna have to deal with, and you'll need to adapt to weather and seasons. So make sure you keep progressing, upgrading your technology, and building buildings. Now this one sort of feels like a medieval building kind of strategy game, sort of in the vein of They Are Billions. You know, ever since They Are Billions popularized that sort of survival building genre kind of thing, we've seen quite a few games attempt that formula. You know, diplomacy is not an option is another one. But Siege of Eirdor could be something unique. There's no particular release window right now, so we'll just keep an eye on this one moving forward. Going isometric, Folklands. This is a relaxing settlement builder with simulated citizens, and you'll find that great stories can emerge from humble beginnings in this little town. Harvest raw materials, manage food supplies, and farm to ensure your folks are happy, employed, and safe. Now, although this is supposed to be a relaxing settlement city builder, there will be trading and diplomacy, where you must create production chains and produce resources so that your people can live. You'll be overcoming adversities like fire, sickness, and crime. And depending on how you build and provide for your people, it will attract different kinds of citizens to come live with you. And there's also multiplayer where you can play with or against your friends or against an AI. So you can play this city builder by yourself or in multiplayer, cooperative or competitive. And bonus point, they are planning Steam Workshop support for mods. I mean, it's a bit hard to pin this one down. Like, it's a really cool idea, but also visually it does look a little bit more 2D. Some might think it's a bit more dated looking, but you know, if you're not too sure, like if the concept sounds interesting and you like the isometric look, 
at the time of recording, there is a free demo on Steam, so you can go check that out. Demos sometimes come and go, but that means there's also a lot of footage for Folklands out there. Now, right now, there is no fixed released window, but it could be an interesting one to keep an eye on. Moving on, post Apo Builder. Now, I'm not always a big fan of very literal titles for games. post Apo Builder, as in post-apocalyptic builder. Yeah, okay. But besides the name, I suppose what really matters is whether it's a good game. In this game, you're supposed to be building up your own city in a post-apocalyptic future. You scavenge and fight for resources. You restore civilization on the ashes of the fallen world. You explore wastelands and protect your people by fighting off raiders, wild tribesmen, and natural disasters. So this seems to have all the trappings of a post-apocalyptic city builder. And it does look visually good, and there's controllable vehicles, and it does seem to have some unique points to it. But it's just so hard to see how exactly this is going to be different from the many other post-apocalyptic city builders we have. Now, at the time of recording, there is actually a free demo for post Apple Builder, but it's listed as a separate thing on Steam called post Apple Builder Prologue, which is actually kind of what I prefer demos to be, the separate listed free game, because then people can leave reviews. And the prologue for this game currently has mostly positive reviews floating above the 70% positive mark. So not only can you jump in and try the game for yourself for free, you can see what other people think of it as well and get a good idea of whether you want to be waiting for the full release of post Apo Builder or not, which is set for a quarter one 2024 release window. Now, this one's drummed up quite a bit of interest. Metropolis 1998. For the nostalgic city builder gamers out there, this one might strike a chord. Not only is it supposed to be a 90s set game, it's a pixel art isometric game with a lot of detail. It's a, supposed to be a fresh take on a modern city simulation experience. You get to design your buildings, you grow and maintain your city, and you manage real-time traffic while fulfilling specific citizen needs in what's supposed to be a massively simulated game. That simulation, for example for the traffic, is, they say, capable of pathing around 100,000 plus people and vehicles. And your citizens will be going to work, sleeping, relaxing, eating, and just living their lives. So I know Metropolis 1998 isn't a game for absolutely everyone, but personally, as a 90s gamer who has played games through the 90s, particularly city builders, this <laughs> sort of feels really cool. I don't know how cool it's going to be on release, but they are planning to go into early access at some point, and early access is supposed to last for two years. So it's not going to be a full release in 2024, but likely early access relatively soon. Because what we can see right now is that there's a free demo on Steam, so you can just try Metropolis 1998 for a taste of it to see if it's something you want to keep an eye on. And if you like it, then we can wait for the early access release. Settlements Rising. Here you gather raw materials, produce equipment, and ensure villagers thrive by managing required resources. You face challenges such as natural disasters, predators, and raiders, all while you're building ships for exploration and trade, and you accumulate wealth and loot. Generally, you protect your people and build a thriving community. Now, this is sort of a colony simulator builder game set in the Middle Ages, and all your villagers are simulated. It kind of feels like sort of banished, but also sort of stronghold, but also there's enhancement cards as well. I mean, there's a lot of games that are sort of adjacent to this one that have come and gone over the last few years. But this one does seem to have some cool things going for it. It is low poly, but there's quite a lot of visual detail. And at the time of recording this video, there is a free demo for you to try. So if you're just sort of curious about it or wary about it, no worries. Just try the free demo for Settlements Rising and then see what you think of it. It is supposed to be releasing in 2024. So we'll see how it goes from the free demo to full release over the next year. 
Now this one isn't quite as ancient as the others, but it is Historic City Florence. This is a historical, mission-based, stylized 3D city builder set in Renaissance Florence. You use the strength of your economy, the power of religion, and the beauty of classical art and architecture to rebuild a city decimated by the Black Plague and civil unrest. This one is promising classic city building gameplay, where you manage resources, expand your city, construct buildings, plan infrastructure, and balance the needs of your populace. There's supposed to be a set of challenging missions, which is nice to see in city building games. There's an economic simulation with workers establishing industries, trade, and all of that, including budgets and taxes. There's legendary artists. You have to deal with the plague. Religious fervor can be a problem. You'll be constructing historical landmarks and progressing through technological advancements because this is Renaissance, so there's a lot being discovered. Or rather, rediscovered, I suppose. Generally, it seems like a cool idea and there's a lot going on, though it is also a kind of a low-poly approach, which is up to you to decide whether you like it or not. It does still seem to have a lot of detail once a lot of things are constructed. But yeah, it's supposed to release sometime quarter one in 2024, so we shouldn't be waiting too long for Historicity Florence. For an ancient Roman city builder, Citadellum. Now this game was just recently revealed properly, and it's one where you build your own settlement, gather resources, and evolve it into a magnificent city. Some interesting points are that there's a world map, you zoom out from your city and there's a whole military system, which you travel around the world with your soldiers and conquer and fight things. But also, to importantly note, it is an auto-battler system. So there is military and you do place your soldiers on the battlefield, but then it's an auto-battling system, which some would love and some would hate. But you know, auto-battlers have been picking up pace in recent years. People keep telling me that Mechabellum is an amazing game. So this might be one for that sort of player. Or if you just want to focus more on the city building aspect. There's a lot of things in this game that harken back to older games, like being able to see into buildings, like in Civ City Rome. And some aspects do also look and feel like Grand Ages Rome, though overall it has more of a cartoony look and approach to the game. It's not necessarily trying to be historically accurate, it's quite light-hearted. There's visuals of soldiers riding mechanical horses and automated chariot carts. It's not going for a serious approach to the ancient Roman Empire, so you might enjoy that, you might not. You can see it on screen for yourself. And also the giant gods walking around. I'm not sure how to feel about them. Are they like too giant? But I don't know. They are supposed to be larger than life. Anyway, Citadelum is supposed to be releasing sometime in 2024. They seem quite set on it, but they have not set a fixed release date yet. For a low poly Rome, Nova Roma. The glory of Rome is at your fingertips in this city building game where you must appease the gods, enact laws, and develop complex supply chains to meet the needs of your citizens. Now, I know a lot of you are put off by low poly, but some of you aren't, and this one has some interesting mechanics, most notably the god powers and god interactions, and also the fluid dynamics of water. You do actually have to manage the flow of water with your aqueducts and dams, and if that's messed up, then flooding can occur. So the idea with low poly graphics is that it's supposed to allow for more complex simulations. And that seems to be the objective here in Nova Roma, where it just has a lot going on. We had a quick look at this earlier in 2023, but nothing really proper so far. And Nova Roma is set to release sometime in 2024, which is when we should get a better look and to see if Nova Roma can actually live up to all the promises. With a similar approach, but ancient Greece instead. Ancient Polis. Travel back 2,600 years to ancient Greece where you'll be building and managing your city and experiencing and shaping the life of ancient Greeks in your own way. You'll take care of your people, providing food and trading with allies and waging war, as you lay the foundations for the first democracy. 
You do build up your city first for the normal people and then the aristocrats and intellectuals as well. You know, they're a little bit separated at the time. There are also gods which you should not mess with otherwise they will curse you. There's a tech tree to research your way through and you have to protect your people from dangerous wild animals. It's a nice looking low poly-ish game with more detail on the buildings. So it kind of looks like the environment is low poly, but then the buildings themselves are quite nicely textured. It's an interesting mix of art styles. But for Ancient Polis, it is supposed to be coming in 2024. If you like these sorts of games but wanted it to be in Greece, here you go. Next up, we've got one that we've been watching for a few years now and been waiting for some kind of release. Thrive Heavy Lies the Crown. This is supposed to be a complex city builder where the fate of your kingdom hinges on your every decision. You explore this medieval land, alone or with friends, and you make tough moral choices as you conquer your foes in RTS combat. So you'll be building up your village and raising an army to conquer and rule in this medieval fantasy-ish city builder. It has a good and evil system, benevolence or tyranny, so your village will sort of be shaped by your moral choices, which has that nice black and white vibe to it. And you know, generally the idea of survival city builders with military, it sounds cool. But Thrive Heavy Lies the Crown has been on the horizon for a while now. And we've seen some gameplay over the last year in demos and tests and stuff, but we haven't really gotten close to that full release. It is supposed to be releasing into early access in 2024, which is why I'm mentioning it here. But this is the kind of game that could just take forever in early access. I really hope it does deliver on all of its promises, but we'll have to see what lies in store in 2024. For Thrive, Heavy Lies the Crown. And then for one that we've been watching for a while, but it is supposed to be releasing, it's called Roman Triumph. This is a Roman strategy city builder where you must build a thriving city from the ground up, you manage resources and people, and survive against a plethora of threats, including gods, the Hydra, the Minotaur, barbarians, and more. So this is kind of a military survival city builder where you are trying to just hold your own against these giant monstrous threats. Over time, you'll be creating your own little empire, designing your city in a randomly generated world, not just to make sure everyone is fed and satisfied, but also it's designed in a way that is beautiful and defensible, because over time, the attacks will become increasingly more dangerous and threatening. And don't forget the gods. If you don't keep them happy, terrible things will happen. There will also be researching of technology, growing crops and raising animals, a whole multitude of Roman buildings to build, including the Hospitium, Insula, Senate, trading with other cities for resources. And this one isn't a campaign with missions, it is a procedurally generated world, but with supposedly realistic landscapes and beautiful nature for you to tame. Now, it all sounds really cool, but we have been watching Roman Triumph for years, but it is set for a 31st of July 2024 release date. A specific date has been set. We will have to see if they're able to stick to it. And finally, we get our hands on this game that has been promising a lot for a long time. All right, then I'm gonna mention a slightly contentious one, Surviving the Abyss. It's Earth 1976 and you have been tasked with managing a deep sea science facility working to perfect cloning. You explore the darkness and keep your crew alive in a hardcore survival colony city builder. But beware, in the darkness there are untold horrors. Now this one went into early access at the start of 2023 and it's got mixed reviews but to be objective it is like 60 something percent. So it's not a bad game in early access, it's just a little bit mixed and it's still been getting updates. So it is getting better over time but maybe a bit slowly. The original estimate for a full release was 6 to 12 months and we're already past that. So it's taking longer than expected, and if development continues, then Surviving the Abyss might turn out to be something quite nice. Especially if you like the theme and the setting, then this is something that would hit you a bit better than others. So this is one that's not going to be for everyone, but if you like the theme, and you like the way they're doing the mechanics, then 
you know, usually 60 something percent games, there are some people that really, really love it. So I just wanted to let you know about Surviving the Abyss, but have a close look before diving into it too deeply. Then I'm going to mention this next game one last time. Moons of Arden. You embark on a space city building adventure to develop a thriving civilization in a real-time planetary system. You oversee production chains catered to the needs of your axonauts. You recover their lost technologies and navigate resource transportation in a system where the planets and everything are moving in real time. Now, I don't want to go too much into this because I've listed Moons of Arden for a number of years now. It entered early access towards the end of 2021, so it has been in early access for a few years at this point, and they were supposed to remain in early access until the end of 2023. It is 2024 and they still haven't fully released. It is still being updated, but taking longer than expected. I'm gonna list this one last time because it should at least release in 2024, otherwise it's gonna be one of those games where I never stop talking about it, so I'm gonna make this the last time I mention it. It's received very few user reviews, but at 96% positive, so the people who play it seem to love it, but there is also a free demo, so it is risk-free to check out Moons of Arden if you're curious. And then for one that we've been watching for a few years now, but it's getting a full release soon, Dream Engine's Nomad Cities. This is a survival city building game with flying cities. You build, automate and defend a flying city to survive in a wacky, nightmare infested post-apocalyptic world full of strange science and dreams. So this isn't a particularly Earth post-apocalyptic world, but it is still post-apocalyptic, and it's got a sort of factorial light thing going on with conveyor belts and stuff like that. You build up your city on this platform and in the surrounding areas, but eventually the nightmare creatures, which are wave attacking your city, eventually get too overwhelming, and you have to lift off with what you can and fly to another location. As you go from location to location, you collect resources, you progress through a tech tree, you build up more advanced buildings, and you discover ancient mysteries as to what really happened in this world. And you do have to manage your fuel and weight for your city, because you can't just fly around infinitely. So this one entered early access in the middle of 2021. And it's got mostly positive reviews, about 75% positive on Steam. And it is sort of an interesting kind of approach to city builders. It was supposed to spend about two years in early access, but we are past that right now. However, they did say the next update will be the 1.0 full release version of Dream Engine's Nomad Cities. It should be early in 2024 where this is fully released. I'm gonna mention this one one more time, Timberborn. I think everyone knows about Timberborn, it's one of the most successful city builders of the last decade. It is a vertical, environmental city builder which has beavers as your citizens. Humans are long gone and the world is struck by droughts and toxic waste and you have to build a wooden lumber city with production chains, harvesting of resources, and surviving the elements. So I don't think I have to get too much into this one. As I mentioned, it is already very popular and it's been in early access since towards the end-ish of 2021. So it's been a couple years in early access on Steam and it's very, very popular. It's got a very positive user rating on Steam at 94% positive, so people are loving Timberborn. And it also just keeps getting more and more updates. Most recently, Bad Water, which just adds even more stuff to the game. There's multiple factions of beavers to choose from with different playstyles and buildings and resources. And generally, it's just a safe bet. Like, it's a pretty complete game. It feels pretty complete, even though it's in early access technically. You know, I played it last and I didn't really feel like it's missing anything, but they keep adding more stuff anyway. So it is still in early access and they originally planned for at least a year in early access but of course we're way past that. I could imagine a full release in 2024 at some point because you know what else is there to add but they might think of more stuff and keep it in early access. This is gonna be the last time I properly list Timberborn mainly because it's been so long. It's generally considered very good. 
For another contentious one, World Turtles. This is another city builder where you build your city on the back of a giant animal. This one is particularly Terry Pratchett-esque with a turtle. And this turtle carries your entire civilization on its back through outer space. Your people, the Meeps, are trying to save it. So you need to cooperate with the turtle rather than conquer it. But you will need to harvest, build, research and explore the void in a sort of a wholesome turtle back builder. Now, this one entered early access in the middle of 2023 to few and mixed reviews. It's like at 68% positive, but there's been not that many reviews at the time of recording. So it is in early access, but there isn't all that much feedback out there about it. It is supposed to be in early access for 12 to 18 months. So the original plan is for World Turtles to fully release in 2024, but it seems like it's going to need a number of updates to draw people into the game first and also increase their opinion of it. World Turtles has some promise, maybe just watch it for now and see how it develops through the next year. Okay, I know animal city builders are kind of the norm these days, you know, with Timberborn being beavers and against the storm having lizards and beavers, but this one threw me off. It's called United Penguin Kingdom. It's a city building game where you build a penguin settlement and you satisfy the various needs of your penguins while dealing with the seals and killer whales. And I don't know, something feels a bit weirder about it being penguins compared to beavers. Maybe because beavers do naturally build certain things, but then lizards don't and that sort of felt okay and against the storm. So why do penguins feel so weird? And maybe because they don't have hands? They just have flippers? So how do they build anything? Hmm. Anyway, this is what it is. It's a penguin city builder. You'll satisfy the needs of your penguins with food, decorations, entertainment venues, coolers, luxury houses, while surviving attacks from killer whales and thieving seals. I mean, it's everything you would expect from a city builder these days. It's just penguins. Now, full release is set for 2024, but there is also a free demo, but it's listed as a separate listing on Steam, which is what I prefer because then people can leave reviews on it. And the free demo is a prologue called United Penguin Kingdom Huddle Up, and that has actually been receiving some quite good reception. A number of user reviews coming in at 90% positive. So despite the weird theme and any hangups you might have, United Penguin Kingdom is getting off to a good start with the free prologue which you can try and then full release should be later on in 2024. Now I know there's been a number of city builders on the backs of giant animals but this one is probably the most successful one so far. The Wandering Village. This is a city building game set on the back of a giant wandering creature called an Onbu. You build your settlement and form a symbiotic relationship with this colossus and you have to survive together in a post-apocalyptic world contaminated by poisonous plants and hostile environments. Now this one has been in early access since about the middle of 2022 so it's been a while but it's received thousands of user reviews at 90 plus percent positive. Recent reviews are at 95% positive, people are loving it, and after playing some of it myself it is quite enjoyable. You do sort of feel like you are protecting and living with this giant creature. They've been adding in more biomes and more designs and more buildings. There's recently been a big villager update which just improves a number of the gripes people have been having about the game, even improving the UI and villager behavior. Having said all of that positive stuff, it was supposed to be an early access for one year or longer. So although that is not specific for how long it was gonna take, it is taking or longer. As we're going into 2024, it's probably gonna be at least two years total in early access. But it seems like it's one of those early access games which is safe to jump into now if you like the theme and the gameplay of it. The Wandering Village overall seems like a safer bet, especially for the city builders set on the back of a giant creature. Next, Synergy. Humans live on a hostile planet in this survival city builder where you develop your city, face natural disasters, make the right choices and explore this environment changing world 
while keeping your people happy despite extreme weather conditions. This one really stands out to me because it's clearly trying to be like the old impression city builders, but it's sci-fi. And this art style is unlike pretty much every other game. It's sort of like a comic book-esque kind of art style combined with the old impression city builders but sci-fi there's a lot to be curious about here now it is a survival city builder what we come to expect you have resources you have to survive there's dangerous weather and you'll be exploring this sort of world map to unlock other regions and explorable world maps and city builders are clearly a thing that people love that's why so many of these games have it but yeah we haven't really seen all that much besides the trailers which do look good and showing off quite a bit right now we shouldn't have to wait too long because it's aiming for a quarter one 2024 release so synergy should release sometime in the coming months for a sequel airborne empire Build your sky city while exploring a vast landscape in an open world RPG city builder. You combine methodical construction and management of a city, but you also have to consider lift, balance, and propulsion for flying your city around. Plus, they're adding in a lot of RPG elements compared to the previous game, including characters, dangers, and adventures. So if you haven't played the previous game, it was called Airborne Kingdom, and it was sort of cool if a little bit straightforward you sort of built up a basic city and flew around achieving resource objectives this airborne empire feels like it's going much much further and it sort of feels like what airborne kingdom was supposed to be it's just a much bigger scale airborne empire is supposed to be releasing into early access in quarter two of 2024 so we should see this properly through the middle of the year and they are planning for one year or longer as well in early access so 2025 for a full release for airborne empire should definitely be playable in 2024. This next one a lot of people have been really excited for, Leisara Summit Kingdom. You build and expand your very own settlements in high mountains. Carefully plan production chains and satisfy various needs of your three caste society while dealing with mountainous hazards such as weather breakdowns and avalanches. So this is a survival city builder that's having some extreme conditions because you're literally building on a mountain on its side and on top of it. I mean, generally it looks good and it seems like the mechanics are interesting with just enough twists to set it apart. They were planning for an early access release by 2023, but they could not make it. It's taking a little bit longer and they're aiming for an early access release at the start of 2024. So it should get into early access in the coming months and they plan to be in early access for six to 12 months. So could be a late 2024 full release for Leisara Summit Kingdom, but maybe it'll go into 2025, which is very likely. But also at the time of recording this video, there is a free demo so that you can just go check out. A lot of people have been waiting to play Leisara Summit Kingdom. If you don't mind checking out demos, you can do that right now. Otherwise, the early access release will start sometime soon and then hopefully a full release later in the year. Of course, for one that's already a massive success, Farthest Frontier. This game released into early access in 2022, and it was just a massive hit. It was a really good building game. You build up your village, it's a survival sort of thing with military aspects. The crop rotation system is really cool. It, it actually allows you to rotate your crops to the benefit of the crop so you can min-max that if you want. It had a lot of rough edges and bugs at the start of early access, but those have been fixed over the last couple years. And it's received over 14,000 user reviews on Steam at 85% positive. So yeah, it's going well. In this game, you protect and guide your people as you forge a town from untamed wilderness at the edge of the known world. You harvest raw materials, hunt, fish, and farm to survive. You produce crafted items for sale and trade. And then you equip your people to battle for your survival against the elements and outside threats. So you probably already know about this game, and if you haven't jumped in, it's probably safe to jump in now. They are planning to leave early access and fully release in the middle of 2024, and Crate Entertainment, the developers of Father's Frontier, and also the developers of Grim Dawn, by the way. They are planning to finish a few projects in 2024 because they got some things on the horizon. 
So we expect Father's Frontier to be finished, and then they're supposedly moving on to maybe an RTS, but we're not too sure about that quite yet. But yeah, Father's Frontier, safe bet, good game, check it out. Then, yes, of course I'm going to mention Mana Lords. Everyone always asks me to mention Mana Lords, so here it is, again. It fits into so many lists and genres, so... I mean, you know about Mana Lords. It looks amazing. We played the demo here on the channel, and it was optimized to an insane level. You could somehow see every blade of grass, and I was getting solid frames. It's a medieval strategy building game, which has this RTS element, but also in-depth city building and large-scale tactical battles, and complex economic and social simulations with resource gathering and production and seasons and trade and diplomacy and so much, okay? Everyone is hyped for Mana Lords. It's promising so much. The demos we've played seem to be delivering on those promises. And it's got a set release date of the 26th of April 2024. So we don't even have to wait that long for it. It's just a few months away from the time of making this video. So really, if you're watching this video, you probably already know about Mana Lords. If you haven't heard about Mana Lords, go check it out. If it really does deliver on its promises, it's probably going to be one of the biggest games of 2024. If it doesn't deliver, it's going to be one of the biggest letdowns. So please deliver on your promises. Mana Lords. Next, we've got a sequel to a popular game, End Zone 2. The first End Zone game was sort of this very solid post apocalyptic city building experience, and it was very well reviewed and being quite popular. Lots of people played the first End Zone, and it really turned out to be something quite nice. End Zone 2, however, is supposed to be even better. Now, if you didn't play the first one, this is a post-apocalyptic survival colony city builder thing where you embark to secure humanity's survival after a cataclysmic disaster. You explore a world and repopulate the last habitable grounds while making tough decisions and just trying to survive through dangerous weather and managing of resources and just trying to keep everything running. Now, Endzone 2 ran a Kickstarter and it managed to hit its goal, which was a relatively very low goal actually. They were only asking for 30,000 euros, which is obviously not the full budget of producing a game in 2024, but maybe they were just testing interest. But it surpassed its goal and it seems like we're going to be getting Endzone 2 in early access in quarter 1 of 2024. And they're saying it's going to take at least 12 months in early access, so we're looking at a 2025 full release for Endzone 2, but definitely playable in 2024. So what are the key differences between Endzone 1 versus Endzone 2? The first thing is zones. <laughs> so in Endzone 1, you played on one big map where you built a sort of global settlement. But in Endzone 2, the world expands as you uncover different zones. So instead of end zone, it's more end zones. Plural, you know? There's new settler behavior with better pathfinding and job distribution and stuff like that. So your settlers should be better than before. There's going to be vehicles where you can choose your starting location and move your settlement and construct additional vehicles to venture into the treacherous badlands. The expedition system is getting an overhaul. And of course, there's going to be new revamped graphics to make the game look better. So generally speaking, Endzone 2 is looking very promising. The first game was a success. If Endzone 2 is just better than the original, then I think a lot of people will like this. But we'll find out when it enters early access in quarter 1 of 2024. Then of course we can't talk about upcoming city builders without mentioning Frostpunk 2. I regard the first Frostpunk game as one of the best city builders of the last decade. And it might be one of the most influential ones as well. Frostpunk 2 has enormous expectations so so much to live up to and that's always such a big challenge because even if it's a good game good isn't good enough for Frostpunk 2 it has to be amazing otherwise people just go back and play Frostpunk 1. Now if you don't know about Frostpunk it's a survival city building game set after an apocalyptic blizzard ravaged earth and the whole world is just an icy wasteland now. Your city is generally based on heating. In the previous game, there was a central heating pillar, which 
sort of carries over to this one, but cities seem to be much more sprawling in Frostpunk 2. Also on top of that, there's always heavy moral choices in terms of what are the laws, what are the rules, and there will be various events where you have to choose what's the right thing to do. So Frostpunk is tied in with all of these moral and governmentorial choices and decisions that you have to make. Now, Frostpunk 2 recently revealed a new gameplay trailer, which does show off a lot more than we've ever seen before. And it does look promising, but it's not gameplay gameplay. It's not raw gameplay. It's still pretty much flyovers, circle arounds, and it looks cool, it looks great, but we don't know too much about performance or exactly how a gameplay session will go. Frostpunk 2 has generally been keeping its cards close to its chest, probably for good reason. They're like releasing little bits of glimpses and information to see how people react. And if they see like whether the comments lean too negative or what the positive parts are, then they start adjusting on the back end. That's my guess anyway, because there's just so much that they have to deliver. So they got to get this right. If they just reveal everything they have right now, then it might give it the wrong impression. So they're being very careful about that. Frostpunk 2 is one of the biggest city builders that's being anticipated right now, and it's supposed to release in 2024, and we can only hope that it lives up to expectations. Alright, I know there's a lot of city builders I did not list, and that's because I have lots of reasons to not list them. First of all, I want to just mention all the city builders that are very notable, but have been in early access for a long, long time. And generally, I have to cut these off at some point, otherwise the lists are just the same every single year. To breeze through these long early access games that are still in early access, Songs of Six that has been in early access for four years. Ostriv, also four years. Empires and Tribes, four years. Kingdoms Reborn, four years. Flotsam, five years. Emir, five years. Foundation, five years. Workers and Resources, Soviet Republic, five years. And also, just as a bonus, Knights Province, it's going to be in early access or beta or whatever for like 10 years. But apparently Knight's Province is supposed to be fully released in 2025. We'll see if they actually hit that one. And then I'm going to mention a number of games that have been in development for years. They promise a lot, some have shown some real gameplay or had demos, and they've been just releasing for years. Some of these may actually come out, some may not, but I don't want to be listing the same games again forever. So breezing through this set, Builders of Egypt, Builders of Greece, Nanzhao the Divine Court, which was known as Builders of China, City of Atlantis, City of Robots, El Dorado the Golden City Builder, Viking City Builder, Mythos Build and Survive, Orc War Chief Strategy City Builder, Feudal Baron King's Land, Colonize, Celestial Empire, Dynasty of the Sands, and Akhenaten Rule as Pharaoh. We may or may not see all of those games at some point in the future, besides the ones that currently have free demos or prologues. There you have it. Press the like button and get games using the GOG referral link below to support videos like this one. Just click the link and buy any game, it really does help. Thank you to all the patrons and YouTube members who really support this channel and keeping videos like these being made. Join if you want your name on future videos. If you want to stay in the know for another genre because this is just the simulation games, you can go to the next list video linked on screen as I'm sure simulation fans like yourself would not want to miss all the strategy and base building games in the other lists. Thanks for watching and I'll see you there.